Hello, everyone. Welcome to Monster of the Week. This is a special one shot brought to you by Bonus Stage Rob. Uh, thank you to our Patreons because of your generous support. We are able to run one shots, three shots, marathons, kind of like this. Uh, we are going to go around and tell you about who we are, where you can find us, and we will start off with Greek Sid. Hey, I am Christina Sid. You can find me on the Twitters at Greek Sid. Uh, generally, just talking about the TTRPG shenanigans I do on the internets. Uh, yeah, I, I can, I'll go through the bajillion games I'm in right now later. Um, but tonight I'm playing, uh, I'm playing Mrs. Vicky Mahler. Uh, she's a professional. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have Wally. Sup, y'all? It's me, Wally, your favorite non-binary slime best friend on the internet who's very excited to be playing in my favorite, one of my favorite TTRPGs she's ever. It's been a while playing this game. Um, you, where you can find me, you can find me over at the internet at W-A-L-L-E-132, like the cute little Disney robot, where you can just find me spouting up whatever's in my brain and out there into the internet. Today, I will be playing uh, one Terry Mahler, who is the monstrous playbook. Excellent. Thank you so much. Next, we have Drac. Hi, um, I'm Draconics or Drac for short. Uh, I see their pronouns and you can find me on Twitter at Draconics, it's D-R-A-K-O-N-I-Q-E-S. Um, for any French people in chat, yes, I know it's pronounced Draconique, but I'm not French, so it's Draconics. Um, <laughs> Adam. Uh, <laughs> uh, today I'm playing uh, Casey, he's any pronouns, he, she, they, if you want to go, if you want to go, uh, you neo pronouns, please do. Um, they are the spell slinger. Uh, I haven't thought of a voice for them yet, so whatever comes out when we start playing is what I'm going to stick with. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, I'm Stella Luna. Today I will be playing Cherry using the Initiate playbook. She uses she, they pronouns. And I would love to introduce you to the one, the only, bonus stage Rob! Oh, <laughs> God, the hype machine is, is I don't bo, 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 I don't know if I'll live up to it, but <laughs> okay, now I have to live up to it. Shit. Okay. Hi. Hello. It's me, your cool bisexual vacation dad here on the internet. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I am bonus stage Rob or bonus underscore stage underscore Rob. Uh, or just Rob, whatever. It's my name. Um, I am a writer and producer of TTRPG content here on twitch and youtube and wherever uh people will have my silly ass um and tonight i will be the keeper of monsters um so uh i i oh gosh i guess i don't know what to do with my hands i guess i just drop us right in huh uh unless there's anything else um at the top of the stream we need still uh nope uh, please follow all these lovely people. All their links have been dropped in chat. That's a free way that you can support them and get more of this badass sort of content from them. Okay. Okay. Whoa. Holy shit. So, uh, we're going to open on Crater Lake, Oregon, where um, it is one of the most bea beautiful national parks here in the old united states of america um it was a um once once a huge volcano called mount mazama um and there's some native american folklore where there were two gods and the um the one the sky god was fighting the god of the below world and their battle was so intense that it actually caused this mountain to erupt and collapse into this enormous caldera that filled over the years with uh, rainwater and just naturally formed itself into a lake that became a protected um, territory. And so where we are now is present day. The lake is, it's winter time. This lake never really freezes over. Um, it's massive, beautiful. People are coming and going and the various overlooks around the lake. And uh, as the sun is setting, 
on another beautiful day, there is an elderly couple um, who are observing on the, where'd it go? The Watchman Peak. Um, and suddenly, the man in this elderly couple silently gets up, seemingly in a trance, and his wife looks up at him and says, Harold, what's wrong? And the man slowly, meticulously, begins taking his wallet out of his pocket, then his reading glasses, and then his car keys, seemingly in a trance, eyes never leaving this magnificent natural beauty of the lake. His wife desperately, futilely trying to get his attention as he walks forward, not really seeming to watch where he's going and inching ever closer to the brink of the peak. And we cut away as the sky darkens, begins to darken storm clouds that weren't really there beforehand. And this poor, poor woman screaming as she watches her husband tumble to his death. So a memo passes each of your desks. This memo, which I believe I have just shown to you yes. in your books. Hey, we did it. You have just received uh, you, the Rangers of the National Park Service, which in this universe is a clandestine men in black style branch of the U.S. government that investigates supernatural uh, and maybe even monstrous happenstances uh, that that threaten the good people of this country. It says, your recent work at the MPS has not gone unnoticed. And it is with the greatest pride that we congratulate you on your promotion. The service is truly better for having you within the fold. This new assignment comes as our way of saying thanks, as well as putting our most promising agents on the case of something truly, shall we say, perplexing. Full mission brief to follow below. The old man of Crater Lake has vanished. For those of you not in the know, the old man is a, uh, I believe it's a 30-foot hemlock, uh, essentially a, a log, just floating around the lake, kind of aimlessly. Nobody really knows why it is standing straight up. Perhaps there's an ant colony inside of it keeping it afloat. Uh, perhaps it's just waterlogged after over a hundred years of it just scooting around the lake. Um, just a log. Nobody really understands what it is. But it is cause for concern at the MPS. Yes, this story, dear viewers, starts with a log going missing, riveting stuff. <laughs> it has resulted in unorthodox and unpredictable weather events. Additionally, this has resulted in various accidents, as well as unexplained disappearances. While our organization is no stranger to unexplained phenomena, we know enough to surmise that this will only continue to get worse. The nature of the old man's relation to the lake is still unknown, so please tread with caution. You and your team will be tasked with investigating what exactly happened and what forces may be at work. So, upon receiving this memo, uh, you all find yourselves, in one way or another, uh, flown, carted, teleported, off to Crater Lake. Uh, and you all arrive outside of the Steel Visitor Center, which I will now send over to your books because technology. Um, currently, the Steel Visitor Center uh, at Crater Lake is closed um, for major structural renovation to stabilize the building against seismic and excessive snow load forces. That's a load of hogwash. That's some red tape chicanery. Um, you know that this is to be your covert base of operations. And so I would love for each of you 
to take us around the table. I'm going to shut the hell up and let you all describe the agents that arrive at the Steel Visitor Center for the chat. Uh, starting with Sid, because you're at the top of my screen. Good luck. Oh, hey. Um, well, I, I feel like uh, Vicky's probably not entering on her own. Um, she's probably holding hands with with her with her hubby Terry. Um, but yeah, she's uh, she's she's surprisingly petite. She's about five four. Um, but muscular for her size um tatted up scarred up uh half shave um but definitely looks uh formidable um which is surprising considering the individual that she's holding hands with um yeah she uh she has most most definitely a uh, a bit of a um a lump uh sitting on the side of her pants there underneath her shirt um if one could wager a guess it's probably a large caliber pistol um that she was not going to let go of regardless of where she was going um yeah but she's just kind of casing the place um looking around seeing what's going on um, standing next to Vicky, uh, holding her hand, uh, and looking up at this building is a seven. Well, you know what? First, why don't we describe how ever how the world sees him first? Uh, you see, uh, pretty much like a tall, handsome gentleman, uh, dark brown skin, red eyes and covered with like a big facial scar going across one of his eyes and he's wearing a tank top and he looks jacked i mean it looks like he regularly goes to the gym he is ripped and he is shredded and he's just standing there looking up to the building but really if we take away the whole facade and look past the illusion we see a straight up street shark i mean you see a seven foot tall all like muscular ridiculous muscles upon muscles of just this seven foot tall like great white shark human of a being well not great white shark uh more like a i would say like a nice genetic mismatch between a great white shark and a killer whale is what it looks like um kind of that same pattern as you would see like a orca would have where it's like white on the bottom but black up top and um he has a big old like scar right there in the middle of his chest and his big old hand is holding Vicky's hand and he's just looking up at the building and he's like, dang, no, I was hoping if we not got this promotion, I was hoping I'd take you down to the red lobster later on tonight, but shit, <laughs> I think we got a little bit of work we got ahead of us before we can even consider a little bit of celebrations there, baby. I mean, they can probably do some takeout or something. Oh man, you know, if they do take out with me, it means <laughs> I think, you know, last time we took takeout, they got all confused. And I said, Hey, can I order at least, you know, 30 pounds of your popcorn shrimp? And they were like, Sir, we do not give out 30 pounds of popcorn shrimp. And I said, uh, I would love 30 pounds of popcorn shrimp. Uh, money is no object. They only gave me like two orders of it. And I felt that it was just a loss on my end. It was a good midnight snack. I mean, they still gave you that entire bag of hush puppies, though. So Oh, they Thursday. sure did. That tied me over for a good couple of hours. Hmm. Cherry uh, is late. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that makes sense. Uh, I think Casey is very much on time. And Casey is um, very androgynous looking. They stand about, um, I think, probably like six foot one, six foot two. Very slender. Um despite the freezing cold weather they all they have really right now is like maybe sweatpants on and like a, a sporty crop top right now with a sports bra underneath um and a, a strap to the back is a um a sheath sword just just straight up iron the open just chilling there um from the crop you can definitely see that there's put there's a burn like a slight burn scar on the left side of their body but um other than that uh you probably don't really notice that much uh, because you're probably staring at the just absolutely cut abs, uh, just 
not muscles upon muscles like Terry over here, but um, definitely ripped. Definitely got some uh, muscles from just repetitive work and labor. Um, the other odd thing about them is that one of their eyes is a uh, deep brown, while the other ones are very, very bright blue. Um, so they got heterochromia. Um, and they kind of just, I feel like they're probably like holding, got like uh, two suitcases right behind them, as if they were just kind of um, heading to their vacation home. Kind of looks up at the uh, cabin's goes. I'm going to be honest, I thought we were going to be getting something a bit nicer, like a, a, a hotel. It's something to really celebrate the promotion we were supposed to get. Well, you know you got to do there, cousin. I, let me tell you something, cousin. You look at a building like this, and of course you're going to see it. it's a bit of a rundown shot, but we both know what's really going down in there. You know, yeah. the guts. Yeah, I was hoping that the guts would probably be nice, but I'd also like the outside to be nice. I can't take photos of this and post this anywhere. You know, yeah, the, the, the outside's rusty. a bit of a shitter. Yeah, yeah, but I'm 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 sure the inside we, we might be able to spruce it up a little bit. We'll see. Um, but yeah, Cherry's going to be late. Um, if Cherry was on time, I'd be a little worried. So yeah, actually, yeah. that's actually a good. If she did show up on time, I would then figure something was very much wrong. So. This just seems uh, pretty much, you know, on the books for her. I, should we head in? Um, I'm not cold, but I'm getting weird looks, probably because of the sword on my back. Oh, no. I call the biggest room, and she just runs in. It's funny she says that because we're supposed to sleep in the same room together, so there's no <laughs> reason for her to say that. And I walk inside. <laughs> Yeah, as as the as the three of you start your way into the building, um, you. Uh, as the door opens, um, you're immediately accosted by uh, a, a detective of the local police department. Um, she has absolutely gorgeous, uh, fiery red hair, um, tall, uh, no nonsense type, and just whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. Yeah. And then she sees your badges uh, and kind of like side eyeing the sword a little bit, um, but not really questioning it oh sorry <laughs> sorry folks where are my manners uh yeah come come on in you folks are from the mps they said they're before you yeah um, yeah cherry's cherry's late she'll be here don't worry oh all right all right well let me let me show you around it's you know want to get out of the rain or you know if the sky ever uh, eventually opens up it's been stormy for a couple days now no no weatherman around here can figure it out but whatever um, where are my manners? I'm Detective Cassandra Baird. Uh, you know, got a, I don't know, got promoted and then they sent me to a lake. So, you know, go figure. So you too. Okay. Yeah. Similar situation. Oh, oh, well, c congratulations. And, uh, I'm sorry. Um, but mm. you know, not much the visitor center. It's under construction, but you know, you'll find radios and uh a gift shop if you really want to peruse and you're bored and you need you know i went to crater lake and all they gave me was this lousy t-shirt thing actually I, I got a question does your gift shop have those little like you know you know mummified frogs with the googly eyes on them mummified frogs with the googly eyes he collects them yeah yeah you know it's like those Are little cheese. Yeah, I'm still doing that thing. It makes those little tchotchkes, you know, with the little with the little googly eyes on them that says, oh, welcome to Tijuana or, you know, welcome to Florida. I was wondering if you got one of those for here. I mean, he's got about 100 of them now. I mean, I'll I'll check around. They might have some at the uh, at the Rim Visitor Center, but I don't know. We we're usually it's a little bit more. <laughs> it's kind of a guilty pleasure of mine. It's a little bit more spooky here. You know, they got that story of the witch at crater lake so they got those like little you know it's a it's a little it's a little paperback you know novel whatever I oh would, baby maybe I they got like one of those little frogs with like a witch hat on it that's probably they got you got one of those things you got a frog with a witch hat maybe Ooh, i will be on the lookout don't you worry i can you know I'll help i would you actually out. love that uh witch of the crater lake thing um I would love to have that book. 
Yeah, there's um so there there's like a like one of those book racks of the paperbacks and everything on like right next to the door. You can absolutely take oh, one. Yeah, I was gonna grab yeah. it. Uh toss the I don't care. Yeah. I think you could tell uh Detective Barrett is absolutely this is not their usual beat. Uh so she's a little bit devil may care about the whole thing. Um but yeah, so there's makeshift office desk or not makeshift, but there's office desks behind the reception area. And then there's a small kitchenette and, you know, park radios where you can communicate with one another. And then um, in the back, they have set you folks up with uh, a couple of different like cots and, you know, a, a, as private of a living quarters as you can make in, in something like this. So welcome to your field office. I definitely and uh, take a selfie. And then text Cherry like, "Hey, where are you?" Um, Terry and Vicky already taken the biggest, I guess, cuts. Uh, so we kind of left with whatever's left over. Uh, you get a text message back, and it, of course, is all lowercase, and there's way too many emojis in it, and it says something to the effect of like, "OMG, Daniel can't fucking drive." <laughs> there's like a, just a moment where you definitely see like the dot dot dots of someone typing. And he's like, Daniel's not looking at your phone right now, is he? No. All under case okay. with a period. Do you want me to? No, my. Do you? Yeah, no. Last time I was in the car with you two, I was definitely terrified that I was going to die. And then kind of like sends that and goes, Are you sure Daniel's not looking at your phone right now? Yeah. It just, you just get like a string of question marks. It's, uh, the weather's still crazy, so how is it getting? Are you okay? Is there any storms, anything you've seen so far? I don't know. How's the weather? Uh, I imagine that uh, the camera kind of pans over to Cherry. Cherry is in the back of a limo. And I imagine the roads are icy and snowy. So we see Daniel, this really well-manicured, well-dressed Korean man in a suit, right? You can tell he's got that physique where, you know, where when they wear the suit, it's just a little too tight. Right, and it's just like perfectly pressed. He's just like just gripping the steering wheel here, <laughs> struggling to keep it on the road. Um, and she's just kind of like lounging in the back, popping bubble gum, texting. <laughs> yeah, it. The funny thing is, the weather was, was pretty much clear as day until you neared the lake itself, and then everything is sort of starting to get stormy, really gloomy. Um, the roads are yeah there's probably patches of ice as you know the sun hasn't shown here in a few days now and it's definitely not rated for a limo they do not recommend uh limousines uh travel up here for sure okay so. i think maybe all of a sudden as we kind of backpedal here it's not a limo but it's just like an escalade with tinted windows oh yeah <laughs> Oh, that's totally fine. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. That was not me shitting on your limo idea. I oh, just, no. I, you know, same effect. Gonna be bumpy. Yeah. yeah. Either way, bumpy ride. Um, um yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I think, like, probably like 15, 20 minutes later, uh, we see Daniel come into the, the building and he looks very flustered. He seems very winded. He looks like he is just pushed to his limits and he kind of drags in a bunch of suitcases. And we see <laughs> Cherry walk in after him. And Cherry is wearing this oversized black hoodie, and she has the hood up. And on the, the edge of the hood are little silver spikes that kind of go out. And then on her shirt, on the, the shirt part of her hoodie, it says, oh, whoa. And she's wearing like a little mini skirt underneath the edge of it. She's wearing fishnets, combat boots, and she's holding what looks like a guitar case. And she walks in, she just kind of looks around. She pops like bubble gum and says, You have any coffee? Uh yeah, Detective Baird, like trying to keep their composure, um, is like, Oh yeah, there's a uh kitchenette back there. Um and then looks at uh Casey, just the fourth. Yeah, that's Cherry. Hey. Interesting. And I think as folks, you, you know, 15 minutes had passed. I think, I think Terry, uh, 
the detective was able to find one of those frogs uh, rummaging about <laughs> on the yeah. They they went behind the counter and there was like an old like I guess um I don't know <laughs> there was an old gift shop stock that wasn't really selling very well and she kind of blew the dust off and found one. Uh, it does have a wi- a little witch hat. Yeah, Dude, I told right. you, baby, that's great. Oh dang it, man! Just... Now I got me one from at least I got this. I you know what this means. You just gave me t- Chachki number one hundred and one detective. That's a name for a, a celebration. That's what I say right there. Wow, look at you. Do y'all have a red lobster around here? Oh, sure. Yeah, there's one, uh, you know, probably like 10 or so miles out of the property. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if now, if one were this red lobster that is 10 or so miles from property, if one were to order up a 30 mat, 30 pounds of popcorn shrimp to be delivered here, would it be an issue? Would they make it into an issue? Um, I would say that with, uh, speaking John Keeperman here, I would say that, uh, I think that Vicky would be able to probably have some Paul being the professional, being the senior operative here. Uh, if, if you were to say, Oh, I don't know, uh, call on the agency or something along those lines. (laughs) Oh my God. (laughs) I'm sure they can make it happen. This this isn't quite the detectives. Uh... I I feel like Vicky has had to make this call before. Yeah. Um yeah, yeah, yeah. So she probably knows who to call. So yeah, sure. Vicky Vicky will sigh a little bit. Uh, but she'll she'll grab her phone, try to get service. Sure. Yeah, you're absolutely able to uh get service out here. Um, and yeah. If uh, if you don't mind rolling plus sharp, first uh, roll, first sure. First roll deal. of the night roll. for red hey, lobster. Roll. For lead for red baby. lobster, baby. Let's go. Okay. Um. So that's an eight plus. Mm. So it's a nine. Nine. Okay. Nine. I think you give a call uh, to your agency contact. What's their name? Uh, Special Agent Grant. Yeah, this is uh, Special Agent Brett Grant. What can I do you for? Grant, it's uh, it's Vicky. Um, oh, don't with the. I swear to God, uh, if this is yeah, about the popcorn shrimp. It's this is this is gonna be a, a code a code red for <sighs> lobster. So you know, um, the budget ain't what it used to be between you and I. And I know, but um, again. It, a shark man's got to eat, so I I, yeah, I don't want I else know. to tell you. I know, I know. All right, I'll pull some strings. Looks like there's one not far from. Yeah, I ain't airlifting it this time. That was not a real emergency, and you still owe me for that. All right, we'll figure it out. <sighs> Maybe they'll deliver. All right, I'll tip them real well if they deliver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He hangs up the phone. You get the feeling that there will be red lobster uh, within the hour. Don't Grant's say I never guy. did nothing for you, baby. Oh, thank you, there, Angel Fish. Every single day, of, every single day of my life with you is another blessing upon my marriage and our wedding bonds that we shared underneath that tree at the, the family's compound. <sighs> Meg, you're embarrassing me. Oh, now I'm gonna sing my praises about you, darling. Your big heart, your big brain is only matched by your rocking ass and tits. Woo! Show them off, girl. Right after that, I think Cherry just kind of looks like she drops the guitar case and it makes a metallic thunk, like something really heavy is in it, right? <laughs> after looking at Terry and Vicky, Cherry just kind of looks at Casey and says, Can you make me some coffee? Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, Thanks. How many sugars? Uh, five. Five, are you kind of down? I'm just gonna rush over to the kitchen. <laughs> so, Detective Baird is in the corner, just observing all of this, really taking it in. And they're a clever, they're a clever detective for sure. And she says, "You folks, this isn't just like some backwoods, you know, post or whatever. Y'all are like." 
into spooky stuff, right? Like this is. Terry looks. Tell me you guys are monster hunters, like as a hobby, like like ghost hunters, like that TV show. Love that stuff. Terry looks. I'm actually not a fan of the ghost hunters. I don't think it's very accurate. Uh, yeah, it, it's kind of a. I, I'm not a fan of of those shows where it's a, uh, uh, let's say, uh, ghost hunt or uh, discovering Sasquatch. I'm not a fan of those shows. They feel like more like a glorification of the process, really not examining the actual cryptid or creature that they're trying to hunt down. Artists, you are oh, you are speaking my language. Between you and me, we have seen some crazy shit here in crater lake let me tell you and i'm not talking about like craig the cryptid or whatever although he is one of my favorite river monsters uh sorry, oh river monsters right yeah, river mm-hmm. monsters mm-hmm. and it's like even like terry is like talking down to her so but when she's talking to him because she thinks like he's normal looking so she sure. thinks he's talking to his face but she's actually just talking to his abs <laughs> I was gonna say Pex, that's even better. The viciousest of these, I imagine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, so she, you know, there is a island in this lake, Wizard Island. Hmm, uh, and they say, I haven't seen it, but the rangers around here say that at night there have been campfires, some real culty looking shit. And when they take a boat out there to break it up, not a trace, not a trace. Woman last week said they saw a dragon in the water, but I don't know about that. But, you know, it'd be pretty cool to have our own like Loch Ness situation here. In Crater Lake. I don't know. It gets a little boring around here. These stories are fun. Like, I, I love them. But yeah, no, there's if, if you're going to have yourself a, a lake monster, you got to name it. I mean, Nessie is, is mm-hmm. I mean, that's catchy mm-hmm. as hell, you know. Um, wonderful, wonderful creature as well. Oki for the Oka, for Boji, you know. Yeah. Like that. That one's yeah, yeah. kind of an asshole. No, we have Colossal Claude, but that's up the, you know, Columbia River. Like nothing, nothing in this lake. There's no runoff or anything. Unless Claude, you know, put on his hat and grabbed a suitcase and moseyed on down to our little well if you got this pool. dragon thing i mean that mm. that sounds that sounds like a leg monster to me so i mean what would what, she call it seems like you should give it a name oh that's a good point uh she's gonna open up fantasy name generator on her <laughs> iphone uh <laughs> go over to dragon names and just roll on the neutral names a couple times here yeah. yeah, here's your here's a coffee, and like hurry like, over to <laughs> Cherry. Thank you. Well, like, oh, Cher- Cherry, you're looking uh, pretty. Uh, uh, look like you traveled a bit there, Cherry. Uh, you want me to help you carry some bags, or are you good? Uh, yes, please. Thanks. Um, like, yeah, the plane ride was absolutely fucking shit. Yeah, I could have teleport. I could have. I know a bit of enough magic to teleport a very uh, a small distance i could have taken all of us i came directly here from a bts concert <laughs> i oh, forgot yeah, was you it? mentioned that how was it uh it was all right i guess cherry says in regular fashion of just bland uh lack of excitement of literally everything <laughs> I think she really liked it. Uh, <laughs> I want to go make myself some tea. Um, coffee gets me jittery. I think it gets grandma does too as well. Um, he's going to rush over to make some tea. Probably greens. Do you have green tea? Is there green tea or like great? Oh, yeah, there's there's for sure green tea. I mean, it's like the Lipton packets. Like this is an office. Like it's not going to be anything like yeah. exceptional. Uh, or, like or authentic like, ah. for that matter but yeah yeah case are like ah, i guess so do it's not the good stuff we had back at home well i mean you're good stuff back at home i mean that's like some legendary herbs and shit it's like okay. you got them tea leaves that uh check my bag oh, oh. You- thank you thank you and it's gonna definitely ruffle through 
Vicky's bag. Front front pouch is some like <laughs> bomb ass espresso, and then she she bought some she brought some of the good tea too. Oh, thank you, thank you. Um, I'm gonna take some of that and just you see like they definitely just delve deep into the tea now. Um, I figured we well. might need to bring our own. Yeah, yeah. They had Lipton. Lipton? Oh, I mean, that's I'm, that's it, just a tragedy is what that yeah. is. It, it's, it's, it, it's good for like, you know, a quick little fix. But if you just want some good sipping tea, I mean, can't go wrong with a good old, you know, like Earl Grey Black or just for give that morning jolt, you know, but uh, or nice a uh, green tea for some sipping. Yeah, I I'm, I'm think I'm in a sipping mood. Um, by the way, do you want to read through um, this? I'm going to wave the, the Witch of Crater Lake book. Oh, uh, you house. know what? I, I, I'll, I'll peruse through it. I mean, it doesn't seem like a much of a great literature. I mean, it just seems like a little bit of a folklore, but, you know, it may help us out. And I'm just yeah. going to take some time and just, like, you know, thumb through it. Sure. Uh, yeah, so it's like, uh, I actually got the title wrong. It's called The Crater Lake Witch. Uh, and it is the second book in the Calupia Girl series inspired by a true unsolved mysteries of Crater Lake, Oregon. Um, it seems like the central character is visited by the ghost of a child that leads him down a path of horrific terrors, centuries in the making, all sort of inspired by the, the folklore of Crater Lake, the things like wizard island and these unexplained deaths throughout the years and there's a little bit of like the phantom ship which is a rock formation on the lake surface itself and like it's it's like a like a what is the term dime store novel is that a thing oh pulp that, novel yeah pulp, pulp novel pulp, yeah, yeah. yeah 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 um it, it's definitely it, it gives you that sort of a vibe nothing substantial but there are definitely you know, throughout everything that you've heard from the detective versus, you know, these folklore and whatever, they definitely highlight on like these different uh, unexplained happenings throughout the years and, and these central like points of interest on the property. So, yeah. Interesting. I think we should definitely keep the on us just in case, like you said, it might be helpful. Yeah, I'll keep this on me. And he like sticks it. He like sticks it into his pocket, and for later on, for some more reading later on, and for quick reference. <laughs> uh, detective, uh, I yeah. heard a little bit about um the the old man, the big log, right? Oh, yeah. isn't it weird? I listen. The other people at the station, they say I'm having too much of. Well, you know, but in the past, there was this expedition to see how deep the lake was in the 80s. And they took a submarine. They airlifted a submarine down into the lake. And the scientists, okay. they said, you know, oh, we don't want a log bumping into the, the submarine. And so they decided to lash it to the dock up on... um. Oh, gosh, I got too many windows open uh, up on Cleetwood Cove and uh, the weather. She points out the window, sort of being like, yeah, prophecy fulfilling itself. Um, weather got real, real scary and they and they freaked out, put it back, cleared right up. So I don't know. I just. Too many coincidences for this old detective, if you ask me. So nobody knows where the hell went. No, no sight. And this thing is usually skating around the, you know, miles a day. And it, you know, it moves slow, but it it moves. It's 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 moving around and we ain't seen it. I don't know if it's the fog. I don't know if it got caught on something, but yeah, I don't know, but you know about the last time it was that anyone saw this thing. Oh, <sighs> well, I would imagine that probably 
probably the the ferry out of Cleetwood Cove on the north side of the uh, of the lake. Uh, they're usually driving the boat around, going to the Wizard Island tours. Not as much in the winter, but you know, on fairly warm days around here, they'll still do it. Um, I don't know. Maybe the ferryman's seen it. All right. Might be a, yeah, interesting to ask him about. Yeah, maybe I'll uh, take a little bit of a swim in that lake to check something out too. Uh, what about <laughs> local wildlife? Hmm. Local wildlife. <laughs> <laughs> Greater Lake. Oregon. Good question. Hey, go stump in the keeper. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. As you explore <laughs> the park. What did I do? Well, we get the standard stuff around here, like bears and coyotes and elk. You might see, I don't know, a porcupine or two, but nothing too out of the ordinary. You got coyotes, but you got any wolves? Not according to Google. <laughs> <laughs> you know, any uh, big cats, uh, like pumas or bobcats? Uh, nothing like, that. like mountain lions or anything. I don't. I don't think so. All right. This, um, these lights that you mentioned, the campfires that would appear on Wizard Island. Oh, um, sure. When did those start? Have they always been a thing, or just oh, recently? for years? I feel like that's been. I've been hearing about that since I was a youngin. But okay, I don't know. But you know, still might be worth checking out. I've personally never seen anything, and I've combed over it with, you know fine tooth comb i i is just so interesting all this like folklore to me i hope you don't mind me prying but what made you so interested in folklore and i guess the supernatural anyway i don't know cryptids are fun and you know like as a kid we used to like you know try to spook each other and tell us all these uh, you know tell each other the the craziest cryptid story we heard and you know you've got like mothman and like fresno night crawlers and i don't know it's all just so whew, getting excited just talking about it yeah, like, as soon as she said cryptids are fun <laughs> vicky just kind of looked over at terry and gave him a little wink <laughs> terry uh kind of gives uh vicky a nudge so uh you ever heard of the uh the the lake monster or the panhandle? It gives uh, Vicky a, a little bit of a nudge. Stomps his foot. <laughs> just just wonder if you heard about it. Oh, I don't know. Is that is that a new one? I haven't. It's been but, years since I've been to Disney World, so I haven't it, been near Florida. Oh, I, I well, you know, it's it's just, <laughs> it's just you know uh, a story about a. Uh, a seven foot tall uh, shark person that sometimes hangs around there and sometimes they may be related to a to a gigantic a megalodon creature that also patrols the area but it's just a story there's no truth behind it or anything not like there's some kind of you know panhandle celebrity in the tampa bay area or anything like that I, Casey I just like elbows terry in the side <laughs> <laughs> i know what i'm reading tonight before bed when Oh, that sounds interesting. I like I, that. I, I don't know how they can how she does not hear him. They, my, my face was on a t-shirt. Terry, no. Yeah, Terry's face is on a t-shirt. Um oh, congratulations. They, they, they used to do they used to, they used to play football um back in the yeah. college years. Ooh, yeah, he was, he was all, all right. All right. Well, yeah. yeah, you certainly look built for it. So makes oh, sense yeah, to me. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Don't know about the pan and lake monster. He like grumbles off to the side. <laughs> yeah, as uh as as the conversation continues, um the detective gets a, a ping on their radio and and she uh you know checks in, just yep, bared. Oh son of a bitch. All right. God, I'll be right down. All right, I gotta go. Wes Gutierrez got his uh his pickup stuck again. Such is the life of Detective Cassandra Baird. Oh, it got me through police academy knowing I would soon be towing somebody's pickup truck. Have fun. Um 
you need yeah. anything, radio's on the desk. Channel five, you know where to find me. And she just thank, heads out. thank you, detective. Yeah. Soon as she's gone, turns to ta- Terry Mahler. What? I, I'm just I'm just surprised people don't know more about the panhandle fish monster. Meg, I, I, we don't want more people to know about the panhandle fish monster because they're not supposed to know about this shit. It's just a fun local legend, Ian Brett. I, I will just relish in my own local celebrity status. It's fine if the, other, if the other states don't know about me. It, yes, Angel Fish. <clears throat> and he like looks down a bit. <laughs> So now that the text has gone, what's the plan? I'm gonna like unsheath the sword and set it down <laughs> on the desk. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Well, I mean, she gave us a lot to work with. Uh, we talked to this person who runs a ferry. We could um, talk to some locals. Um, Casey. Yeah. Did you make this coffee with water from the tap? Um. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, you see Cherry uh, opens up a little fanny pack that she's got on. It's got like a got like a little kawaii bunny rabbit decal on it. She unzips it. She pulls out a dandelion and she begins to rip off some of the petals and drop them into the coffee. Uh, oh, I made that coffee for you to drink. Okay. <laughs> it sucked. <laughs> sorry. Um... She is going to use uh, use magic. I'm going to use my Ooh. move, that old black magic. When you use magic, you can ask a question from investigate mo- mystery move as your effect. Ooh, I like that. You still do need to roll to use magic, though. But one of the you get to what select one of the questions. Yeah, investigate and mystery. Okay. And, yeah. Um, Rad. So okay. that's weird, right? Yeah, so please roll plus weird for me. Okay, so oh, <laughs> my cat's investigating my roll. Okay, that's a <laughs> nine. Somebody's investigating a Mr. Wee. Mr. Wee time, <laughs> lucky. That's a that's a nine, you said? Yes. Okay, great. So it does it does work, you see, as the petals uh hit the um shall we say modestly made coffee um she made that for you yeah i kind of think uh, like the logic yeah. here is the water is from the local area sure so maybe sure. there's power in the water okay all right so yeah so what does it look like when these petals hit the uh hit the water what um what effect oh i think um you see the petals kind of floating on the coffee and then they begin to sort of like turn into ash and they blacken mm. and then they literally just disappear into the coffee there and it kind of makes this dark swirl that turns into an ink blot. Okay. Um, ask one of the questions. All right. Yeah. So you do get your desired effect, which is to ask a question from that. Uh, but I get to choose a glitch. Oh, okay. Um, mm. What is being concealed here? Ooh, okay. So, what is being concealed here? That's interesting. So, I think a an image forms on the surface of the coffee. The petals sort of swirling. Uh, this inky black uh, gives way to maybe a... a sort of a faded image of wizard island um you see you see uh kind of a ghostly fire burning on the peak of wizard island and three hooded figures standing around it the smoke sort of billowing up um perhaps what drew the unwelcome attention uh, as a you realize that you're seeing this from an overlook as they are seeing it through the eyes of an onlooker. Um, so you can't quite make out who these people are or or what they are even. Um, but the person whose eyes you're seeing is heading down into 
uh, into a boat to head out and check out the lake. Or, I'm sorry, check out the island. Um, but as they near the island, uh, the image is lost. Um, it seems you could only see for a short duration. Okay. Um, I think uh, as uh, she is seeing this, you basically see her blink. And as she does, her irises disappear. And she just has like the ghostly image of a dandelion replacing her uh, irises. And mm. uh, once she kind of blinks it away, she'll share with the rest of the group and say, um, I think there's some sketchy shit happening over on Wizard Island. Like, maybe there's people LARPing, but I kind of don't think it's the season for it. Uh, someone on a boat was trying to head over there, but something happened to them. I don't know. Huh. All right. Well, um, maybe this, the person who runs a ferry might have an idea of people taking boats out to the island, something like that. Yeah, yeah. maybe. Dumps the coffee. <laughs> Oh, okay. no. He puts, like, Terry just puts a big hand on Casey's shoulder, just like... Cherry, just gives, gives it you can check, check my bag. I, I, I brought I brought some of the Fiji stuff if you want to make another cup of coffee. I love you, Vicky. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Zip. It's okay. I was working with what I had. Um... <laughs> Nobody okay, so blames should... you, Casey. <laughs> Sorry, Casey. It's all right, Casey. I mean, look, you know, it's, it's, it's the baby steps, you know, first you got to learn like what their favorite coffee is. And, you know, it, yeah, I you always got to just started dating. Like we're still learning about each other. I'm, I think I'm, oh. I'm getting there. Uh, let me, let me give you, let me give you a little bit of advice from your old big, or from your old cousin. Now, when you, you're fresh in the relationship, you just started dating. This is when you, you know, you, you figure out their cute little quirks, you know, the little things that makes them special. And then you, you know, you develop on, it. you know, it's kind of like, you know, it's like with Vicky, you know, you know, she gets so into her work, you know, she makes that cute little face, but gets all frustrated. So, you know what I did one time? I noticed she was always squinting. So I made sure I got a nice little, like, you know, light for her workbench. You know, it's the little things you got to focus on. I like it when, I mean, I think it's kind of cute when she doesn't show any emotion at all. Um, you, you know what, cousin? Um, why, why, yeah. why don't you why don't you think more on that question? Okay. Um, or 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 you can focus on that and um, you. Oh boy! I, I you know what? Why don't you just why don't you focus on that one for a bit and try to figure out a figure out what to do from there? Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> you just kind of sit there like the sword the sword in hand, kind of like thinking deep, deep in thought. <laughs> <laughs> While they're having that conversation, Vicky just leans over to Cherry. Yeah, you're gonna learn real quick. You you gotta tell them exactly what you want. Like you, you can't leave anything to chance. Like, hey, can you make me a cup of coffee? Make me a cup of coffee with the good beans and with the good water and make sure that it's steaming hot when you hand it over. And they'll get it eventually. Okay. So I need to tell them exactly what to do. Yeah, I mean basically. Okay, I'm really good at that. I could do that. I figure as much, yeah. Thanks, and then, you know, a after a while, you know, they'll figure it out. But, you know, for at least to start, you know, new in a relationship, just tell them exactly what you need. It's really cute when he makes mistakes. Yeah, it stays pretty cute. You just kind of see her, like, look over her shoulder. She's smiling a little bit. And then she's just, like, pushing the button on the espresso machine. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh i i think while um while preparing i think casey's stumped like they can't think of another answer to the question that terry gave them it's like i can't think of anything so i'm gonna do something productive and um they pull out the sword and set it down on the table and i would like to use magic um to Ooh. infuse this sword just just in case you run into trouble and have that done uh, nice and early sure um, sure that makes sense yeah roll me plus weird hit me with that infused sword that is i believe it's called box cards i wrote two sixes so 14 plus well five. well well yep magic works without issues uh would you like to enchant your weapon yeah um i think right. what's that look like 
they kind of like look for a spot in the office that's um, open enough for them to sit down and sure. they kind of like look around for something to like hold the sword up but doesn't see anything so it's like stab the sword into the ground <laughs> and then sits down cross-legged in front of it and they yeah. place um one hand on one side of the blade and the other on the um, other side and you see you feel like uh it's a probably a very weird feeling but like almost directly cut like with um them at the center the right side of the room becomes like oddly warm and the left side of the room get, becomes oddly cold um and just like a direct like cut right down the middle of the room so like if you're standing in between you're feeling like hot on one side cold on the other um and you see the blades um erupts into flames on one side and frost over on the other forcefully oh. dying down and you see um red and blue runes uh, appear on the side of the blade for pulling it out and sheathing it again. Okay, just in case we run into trouble, I want to have that ready. Um, so we're finding the, the ferryman, right? Uh, I need to go change. Oh, okay. Do you want me to bring the suitcases or? Uh, I think Terry's going to help me. Okay. Uh, uh, well, uh, actually, uh, I'm going to, oh, my back. And he shoves the suitcase <laughs> at Casey. <laughs> Oh, uh, why don't you go help her out, Casey? Why don't you, why don't you help her out, Casey? Yeah, yeah, uh, sure. Okay. Are you, are you okay, Terry? You yeah, to... it's a, uh, you know, it's a pain right there under my I door. I'll, I'll, with that. I'll step on his back. Y'all just, yeah, just take care of it. It's just tense into my dorsal okay. pain. It's, mm, just need I'm a... basically, I'm literally an icy hot. So, like, if you need any help with that. No, I, 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 will, Casey, I'm, I'm, uh, Casey yeah? he, he likes getting stepped on. All right, let's just go. I, I fair, I fair. Well. It's twenty twenty. It's twenty twenty two. I don't think shame. <laughs> <I'm gonna try. laughs> a man, I was literally gonna step on his back, but crack. Uh, all right, whatever. <laughs> um, what do the bedrooms look like? Oh man, um, not. They just it's pots. <laughs> it is pots in the corner. This is very oh, far Jerry. from the presidential suite that I'm sure you are used to enjoying. Yeah. Um, As the door yeah. like swings open, Cherry just looks even more disappointed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Uh, you you can see though that they left you kind of like just divider curtains just for privacy. You know, that's that's the thought that counts, probably. Uh, you can put them down right there. Okay, go. I brought the the case as well, and like it sets down the guitar case as well. Yeah, it's like really heavy. Um, and uh, you see Cherry just kind of like prop them up on the different cots just kind of taking everyone's cots to spread her shit around and she starts <laughs> opening things up and you can see her pull out these really archaic looking weapons um she pulls out what looks like a silver knife and um it's in this scabbard that's kind of like embroidered with red and it's very colorful there are these motifs of various different flowers with very large blooms and there's a handle that um is leather bound in black and it has a red tassel hanging off of it. She also pulls out a sword of a very similar design. She pulls out some fighting sticks that are made out of cherry wood and they're capped with these um, kind of sturdy silver tips. And she also begins to lay out her uniform for her sect because she's an initiate. She's part of a different order. And um, her outfit that she lays out she puts it down with great respect and she very gently pushes out any wrinkles and you can see what looks like to be uh what is a traditional humbuk for a man so it's this sort of like folding uh robe that goes over in multiple layers and she pulls out this really dope hat that i've y'all have seen pictures of it but it looks uh it's a kind of like a top hat but it's made out of horse hair and it's mesh so you can see, like, the hair when it's pulled up into a bun. After laying it all out, she says, get out. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> and hurries out. Yeah, she'll, she'll, she'll Tara, get dressed and then come downstairs. Tara, where'd you put Veronica? Uh, Veronica, I put that in the... Dang it, I put that in the big suitcase is where I put that one in. All right. Uh, pokes around for her suitcases, opens up two of them, I would imagine, and very quickly starts uh, assembling a sniper rifle. Um, just to have it, 
you know, just in case have it on hand. Um, but yeah, just puts all that together. Isn't sure where to put it once she's got it all together. Uh, Terry walks over to Vicky after she assembles a sniper rifle and he puts his hands on her shoulders. Like, Oh, that's, that's the rifle you shot me with when we first met. Yes. Why you got that? Yeah. Every time I look at, I just get all nostalgic. It's when I met my baby. You are the most romantic man I've ever met. You know that? Well, you know, it took me a nice, well, it took me a good old time to finally admit, to get you to admit that you do have feelings for me. Shut up. <laughs> she and puts the she gun off to the side she, of her cot. When she does that, he goes, ha, ah, just admit it, admit it, Vicky. You like me. Well, I fucking married you, didn't I? Yeah, you got a crush on me. Are we ready to go or what? <laughs> Casey's coming down like, I think uh, Cherry's getting dressed, so uh, I got kicked out. So that's usually what happens whenever she's getting dressed. Once she's done, I think we'd be ready. All right. Well, let's get started. And he just takes off his shirt. That's, that's how he gets ready. <laughs> yeah, after a while, you'll just, uh, yeah, nudity isn't really a, a problem. Yeah, no, I'm I'm used to it. No, no, it's new. It's new. It's fine. Um, I mean, this one barely wears a shirt, so I mean, uh, hardly bad night anymore. She's totally lying as soon as he takes his shirt off. She's like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm Cher- looking respectfully. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Cherry comes down and she is just wearing the full hanbok and everything. She has the sword and all of her weapons. She has assembled a sniper rifle out of nowhere and has it on her back as well. Um, actually, no, she'll just be carrying the guitar case. She wouldn't have put it together. Um, and she's wearing these, like, um, wooden platform shoes. Uh, and she's got on these, like, poofy socks. Just, like, extra poofy because it's nice. It's really cold outside. She says, all right, I'm ready. You look, you look great, as usual. Thanks. This is my monster murdering outfit. Oh, this is mine. Murdering the style. It's the exact same thing she always wears every day. <laughs> I don't really have one. I just kind of wear whatever. It like, looks down at the crop, <laughs> the crop top, or, like sports leisure. Um, are you going to be a warm in that? Yeah, I'll be fine. Okay. You're going to bring the rifle though? I mean, I was, I, I got mine ready, but I, I feel like it might be a little. Okay. <laughs> she just got like yes. drops. <laughs> I don't need mm. it. Mm. We talked about this. Please never drop your weapon. You see her just kind of push it out of frame with her shoe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Yeah. Let's see if we can uh, track down this fairy then. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, so as y'all leave the visitor center, um, there there is like a, a Jeep outside that they left you to travel around the lake. It's like about like a 13 mile drive around the lake. So about like 32 ish minutes. Um, oh, shotgun! And he but, runs yep. over but, to the car but, and just yep. <laughs> climbs but on Vicky, his side. Vicky did bring her monster mobile i mean they they had to bring that down oh sure no you know what in in that case that is your vehicle sorry i should have asked if you had gear um yeah so you see that there's a jeep sitting there uh and then it is completely overshadowed by uh vicky's (laughs) monster mobile like you get this cool like pan on like you know this really nice freshly washed uh uh park ranger uh jeep and then it's just like Oh, wait, what's this? And then uh, <laughs> tell me what the monster mobile looks like, because this is going to be soon. Um, so uh, Vicky's Vicky's mobile um, is uh, it's it's, you know, set out for all your monster catching needs. Um, it is. Uh, well, it it looks like a, a, a florist's van. Um, I believe it actually. Uh, what, what, what did we say was on the, the side? 
It was, it was Cher Cherry came up with the idea, actually. Oh, yeah. Kim's flowers. Oh, that's right. Kim's uh, flowers. Yes. Yeah, there we go. And it had the, it was the national flower on it, right? Of of Korea? Yeah, the Mugu Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's uh, mechanically, it is anonymous. So it mm -hmm. blends in. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, uh, it's also, you know, kitted out in the back. Um, most importantly, with a monster cage. So, you know, just in case we happen to catch this leg monster, uh, you know, throw it in the van. Um, Good deal. But y'all are fucking squished back there, um, which I think is very appropriate because uh, Terry just called shotgun. So <laughs> Casey and Cherry are just sort of squished yeah, in the like, back. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Like, Ooh. But Terry gets into the front seat and uh, when Cherry and Casey get in the back, he like takes the little real like the real view window like angles it up so they can see his face looking up so they can see his face and he like angles it so Casey can see his face and Terry looks at Casey like <laughs> and he just goes all, and he angles I, it. all you see because I think we're like if it's squish and we all have like swords on us so you just want to see it's like oh sorry let me just get the sword and try and just move it in a way that's so we can actually fit it back in like jabbing the side of the sword stop stabbing you with your sword Casey. sorry I'm sorry okay. uh, y'all want some privacy yeah. back there or huh <laughs> no. <stay> stores. <laughs> you see okay. cherry just bring up her phone and she just starts <laughs> watching videos really loudly <laughs> oh no <laughs> <laughs> well then it sounds like y'all head on uh around the lake um as you're driving um you do come up on your right you're going around like the west side of the lake here and on your right you do end up passing wizard island so i do have a nifty little view that you would be seeing as you drive past it here Ooh. um yeah so you and and imagine a much much stormier uh the sun is also beginning to set slash has set uh so it's really starting to get dark and and terry honestly you could probably swim there faster than a ferry i'm not gonna tell you how to terry but um you are pretty you are pretty close uh to the island for a moment and you do see um where on the peak where they say you can see ghost fires at night uh but nothing Nothing as of yet. No, no movement, no suspicious activity or anything. Um, and as you're driving around, um, as you get near one of the trailheads for Watchman Peak, um, it seems as though there's been some sort of an accident. There's there's kind of uh, bystanders milling about. There's um, you can see a pickup truck that seems to have driven itself off of the road and into a ditch um, along the side of the road and just, you know, police tape, do not cross, uh, local authorities around it. Um, they are trying to wave you around uh, if you want, but um, there is some sort of a commotion as you're passing this trailhead. I seeing this, um, I would like to use more magic, please. Because um, mm. one of the things you can do with magic is observe another place or time. I just want to observe can. that place and see if I can figure out what's happening there. Yeah, absolutely. Movie. Roll me, roll me weird. Roll me weird. Guess I'm uh, weird. Ten. A ten. Oh, that'll do it. Magic works without issue. Um, and so you're observing another place or time so so what does this look like for casey um i think casey like shimmies as far away from cherry as possible because most of their magic has to whenever they use magic their body heat changes drastically so that they don't want to give like cherry frostbite or like uh, a burn by accident well uh, you so don't want to make her sweat <laughs> all right i mean sweat. this one won't be sweating uh this is it the temperature in the the van drops like very suddenly as um it's um frost seems to uh, uh, cover Casey entirely. The eyes kind of roll in the back of their head, and they let out just a, a sigh as like um a wisp of white smoke leaves their mouth, and 
I think everyone's probably seen this before, but it, as far as you're concerned, the body of Casey is essentially dead. Um, and uh, because the way with Casey, a lot of magic comes from, um, I guess, essentially the spirits that reside within her. When, when it comes to spirits, her body is very flexible. It can let some out and allow some in pretty easily. Um, so Casey leaves, essentially, and is kind of like literally floating towards this place to observe. Ooh, that's exciting. So I think as as Casey floats toward it, I think figures, they, they start to see um, other figures sort of, it's as if time is sort of reversing and you're seeing other astral projections of other folks, uh, not quite the same as yours, um, begin to replace themselves to where they were at the time that you're trying to observe. And I think as you're, as you're turning back time, walking forward, you see where this truck left the road and, you know, you see it reverse come, come out of the pit. And it seems as though you can see um, some sort of a couple of shadowy figures in the woods, um, namely something. It's as if a rock itself opened up and something is beckoning. You just see a hand beckoning to the driver of this truck and it seems like they began trying to advance toward it Ooh, okay um so it katie's like soul essentially snaps back like almost like a spring just snaps back and mm -hmm. the temperature in the van just shoots back up to normal again and the frost immediately melts off of um casey whoa um okay so I originally thought that'd be unrelated, but I checked just in case. Um, does a beckon and hand coming out of the ground mean anything to any of you? Zombies. Zombies, yeah. Um, <laughs> some of the part of, yeah, that makes sense. But I don't think it's zombies. Um, Maybe someone like got buried. Maybe. Go for zombies? <laughs> um, well, what I saw was um, that, that car crash. Um, it seems that someone, something was beckoning the driver, and the driver just kind of swerved towards it. Um, toward it, not away. I'm yeah, sorry. Which is why hand bursts out of the ground and starts beckoning toward me. <laughs> I'm swerving away. I'm just saying. Yeah. That's why I'm thinking it might be a bit more than just a, a zombie. Um, oh, I know that. I know exactly what it is. It's uh, one of those terms. It's called a, uh, <clears throat> a necromancer or an arch lich or a, or a lich king. Uh, if you want to like go higher up in the rankings of oh power, oh my god, it's called Wizard Island. There you go, right there. What some... if the wizard of Wizard Island is some kind of ancient zombie wizard? I mean, I think we mess it weirder. So I don't think that's off the table. There's three of them, though. I saw it in my coffee. So it's three zombie wizards. Maybe, but I, the guy was, the person was driving a boat. Hmm. You know, I could swim out there pretty fast, like right there and back. I mean, that's nothing for me. I could, you know, if you just park the car, I could swim out, come back. See you can, anything. the rest of us can't, and I'm not letting you go out on a mission by yourself. Remember what happened last yeah. time? I do remember what happened last time. I mean, I did get stuck inside of the inside of the Panama Canal for days. So, yeah. I, I mean, I can go with. I can't swim, but I can freeze the ice. I can at least run or walk along. Yeah, there you go. Casey, be my backup. Well, if you freeze the ice, can't we just all go together? Yeah, that's also true. I'm going to go ahead and go with Cherry's idea on this one that we all stick together. This is me talking as friends and family and also me talking as your senior officer. We're sticking together. That, that Plus, you know, never split the party kind of thing. I hear it's highly frowned upon. I always try to do it in my games, but... Um... 
Yeah, me too. But, you know, considering, you know, metagame in this in one shot is probably not a good idea. You know, I, I think our uh, our keeper might look look down upon it a, you know, a little bit, considering we only have so I much feel time in this seen? game. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> you know, as we're making our way over to the water side, we should probably talk about when to reschedule our uh, TTRPG game so we can play more regularly. Um, yeah, look, I, yeah. I, I, I mean, I posted, I posted, you know, when to me inside the group chat, but no one replied to it. I responded. Thank you to Vic. Thank you, Vicky, uh, Cherry, uh, Casey. Listen, it was really important that you looked at all those videos that I linked. Okay. All right. First of all, it. first of all, thank you so much for sending me the John Cook video. I mean, you know, I mean, a big old BTS stand, and I thank you very much for sending it to me. But I would like to schedule up because. Last time I remember, I left y'all inside of the Red Dragon's lair and someone rolled a one on their self score. And now the Red Dragon is right there. See, now I said roll initiative, but we ran out of time. I I was wearing plate armor, okay? I had disadvantage on the stealth show. I'm sorry, okay? I'll play a halfling next time. We probably should get going. <laughs> y'all, we're here. Um... <laughs> Okay, give me a oh sec. Um, it's going to be a bit hard. I can usually do this when I'm just carrying my body weight, but if we're carrying two others, um, it, might, it might have to freeze it for a bit hard and a bit longer. Um, and I'm going to, again, use magic to try and freeze a path as we go along with Terry sitting beside us, probably. Is okay. Is there a mechanic to help people? Um, I, I believe so. Uh, it's been... It's been a bit. I think there is a mechanic for helping out in Monster. Oh, uh, yes, there a is a help out. Uh, you When you help out another hunter, um, you roll plus cool. And depending on the level of success, you either add or subtract from there. Um, Do I roll that now? Uh, yeah. So if Cherry would like to help Casey, uh, Cherry, you will roll plus cool. And Casey, are you looking to use magic again? Then yes, yeah. Okay, so you'll you'll roll plus weird. Okay. Uh, so I rolled uh an eight. Okay. Yes, an eight. Uh, I rolled a ten. Ooh. Um, okay. I do have a thing that says uh one of my features is called helping hand. When you successfully mm. help out another hunter, they get a plus two instead of the usual plus one. Hey. Wow! So with that an makes eight, a ten, that bumps you right up to a full success there, Casey. So look Hell at that. Yeah. Good rolls all around, team. Uh, the okay. way that Sherry helps with this is she pulls out yeah. her phone and she says, "Casey, make it look badass. I'm gonna record this." Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, that immediately, yeah. That that immediately definitely inspired Casey. I, sure. I imagine. Okay. I'm Good getting. I think I'm understanding the dynamic. Here. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we're, we're at about the halfway point. I think that's a good time as any to take a break. Uh, if that sounds good with everyone. I'll quickly describe how Casey makes you look cool. Um, Casey pulls yes. out the sword yeah, sorry. and uh, points it at the, um, eye. So then as he slices down, you see a wave of just frost erupt from the blade and just, oh. uh, in the slash motion, it just freezes the exact same shape across the, the that eye. Is um, that's and just she sit back again and it's like how was that do you get my good side of course you know that i am a wonderful amateur photographer and yeah, i've got the, the best. best filters i cannot wait okay we probably should like put like a little sneak peek in the reels so people can see and be ex like, excited for what's going to come and then we post the video afterwards but okay let's go <laughs> okay <laughs> that is incredible <laughs> i i love picturing the absolute like anime like you know uncheat the sword do this super cool like well practiced slash and then like the spinning sword into the sheath like trunks uh yeah. from bbz <laughs> and then immediately turning around and being like did you get it <laughs> <laughs> oh, whereas terry God. and vicky are off to the side like all right baby uh, give me your shirt so you don't lose this one and then okay, well, we'll meet you we'll meet you over there all right i give I, uh, I, I give her the shirt kiss on the forehead i dive into the water <laughs> i love it that's brilliant all right. 
Okay, well, folks, uh, we'll be back in about five minutes. Please join in, join us in doing a stretch, grabbing a water, some snacks, and we'll be right back. And also, this break screen is going to be really awkward because my cat's not here. We're back. No. <laughs> Welcome back. Uh, where we left our heroes, they uh, killed the monster off screen, and everybody wins. Bye. <laughs> No. Yep. Um, but then, unfortunately, the rocks fell and everyone died. So. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I don't know what. I don't really know what happened. And y'all woke up in a bathroom. I've been watching <laughs> Russian Doll for the first time. <laughs> I just finished <laughs> season two. Finished. I, we're we're about halfway through season two. I had never watched season one, oh and so gosh. the last two days, Lana and I watched mm, season one. So loved good. it. Fell in love with it. I love so her. Good. Didn't realize it was Amy Poehler for like the first like half of the season <laughs> i was just like oh my god this makes so much sense mm -hmm. uh, That's amazing. anyway anyway but yeah so uh casey just cast a super duper dope ice walking spell cherry got it all on ig uh or or tiktok whatever the kids use the clock app we have we one. like to spread we don't just go yeah. on one social media we have to cross pollinate all of our no, social media I, really I mean that's that's, well, that's, that's how that's, it works that's yeah, how that's it works. the growth strategy yeah well, how absolutely. do you know i have a million followers on all social media platforms makes sense all of them like all of them. ig and tiktok twitter mm -hmm. absolutely even myspace honestly um mm -hmm. listen you don't know myspace is gonna so you have never a know comeback. it could it could come back it may come back and terry in his magnificent vicious v street shark form uh dove into the lake to swim over so y'all are making it across the across the lake that's where we left you um as you're walking you notice so you would know just based on your briefing of uh crater lake uh, in general um the lake doesn't t it's very very rare for it to freeze over and you're seeing as you're walking um even outside of Casey's ice path, you are starting to see that the ice is slowly encroaching from the sides of the lake. Um, there's probably about like 30 yards of ice starting to form around, uh, around the, the rim of the lake. Um, you would still need the passage uh for sure so it's not like your spell went to waste or anything but it's just something environmentally that seems everything just seems off um and it is only getting darker and slightly spookier um as i'm swimming through the water because yeah. like it's my kind of like my domain can i really tell how off it is even in the water and like you also can yeah. I try to see if I can see where the log was at? Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, yeah, so you absolutely being one with uh water, um, you this doesn't feel right. Um you're not sure if it's the the weather, like or the ebbs and the flows aren't quite ebbing and flowing the way that they should be. Um, I'm trying to think of, yeah, I, it sounds like, how are you trying to determine where the log was or, or maybe like, is there, is there anything in particular that you're trying to do? Uh, Try to like, see if there's like a certain like point in the ground that looks like where a gigantic log was like, Maybe if it was just like a gigantic log was like if it was if it was removed, there'll be an obvious like dent in the ground. Oh, well, so the 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 bottom of the lake is like super duper like this is only like a 30 foot log we're talking about. Oh. This is like depths, Ooh. like okay. uncharted depths. But okay. if there's something else, I don't know if uh, if you if you're able to sniff out like wood chips or something i don't know how sharks work um, um <laughs> i'm willing to be convinced <laughs> oh well this is what i'm gonna do sure uh because i am a shark person and i was made to be the perfect soldier using all type of shark dna yeah. uh, i would like to use the shark's ability of using electronic electric pulses to send out a wave to see if the uh log and if because it's like a weird mythic magic log, it probably leaves a certain unique 
thumbprint mm. where it was left at. So I'm sending out this pulse of like electric pulse to sense that uh, thumbprint it may have left behind. I love that. Um, would you please roll plus sharp? Because it sounds like you're trying to investigate a mystery. Okay. Oh my god. If you've ever told Cherry that you have this ability, she has totally written a fan fiction about it and called it like your whale senses because you'd like go like me <laughs> out into the water. That's the way that she has written in her fan fiction. Whale senses. So I got a nine. Okay. Um that's I got a nine total. So for that. I mean, he's definitely made those sounds before, but he wasn't while he was using that ability. He's investigating another mystery, this. if you know what I mean. Don't need to know this about my cousin. <laughs> this is a very uh, la, 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 la. <laughs> Oh, man. Tell me more from my research. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm done. I promise. Gosh. Okay. Um, so I've just started. I'm sorry. <laughs> I got a nine for my investigation. Okay. Um, so on a nine, you do get to hold one, and the hold can be spent to ask the keeper one of the following questions, mm -hmm. uh, which I have... Oh, okay. They posted very oddly in the chat there. Let me see if I can format that better for you. Um, but if there's anything... Oh, um, I'm not posting the way hmm. I want it to. Well, I definitely like to use the hold for like where, like where did it go? Sure, sure. And and like by like asking where to go, I would like to see if it had like if like it left a trail behind it, kind of thing. Like okay. that pulse trail is like behind it, kind of thing. Yeah. So I think as you send out that, um, oh, thank you, Stella. Um, I think as you send out this this radar, you're catching. Um, maybe as you, the, the first, the first pulse or two, you are sort of trying to pinpoint which thing you're trying to latch on to. If it was a, if it was like a bloodhound or something, you'd be smelling for a certain scent. Um, and you, you find the particular signature, I guess, that you're looking for. And as this pulse happens, you're seeing it like blinking every now and and then like these little pulses uh and they and they drift further and further and further away uh toward um away from wizard island actually a little bit more east than wizard island hmm. um and they sort of go until your vision can't really clock them anymore or i guess your your sense can't clock them anymore okay um but yeah I uh, swim up to the surface and I climb up onto the ice bridge. I'm like, oh, 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 hold up, wait. Uh, and I like just reinforce that section of the ice because definitely didn't make it for. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you, cousin. Uh, thank you, cousin. All right. Well, I think I found where that log was at. Okay. And perfect. in the direction that it was and where it was taken. And he points off in that direction that he saw the trail going. Oddly enough, it's coming away from this here island. You know, it's oh. leaving the island area. Oh. I mean, do you think maybe what Cherry saw and what you saw is like connected? Cherry saw some people like going toward the island. Maybe. So maybe whoever went toward the island got the log, took it away. If we don't find a boat here, then they probably took the boat. I still think we should investigate the island anyway. Yeah, it might give us a clue as how many people are dealing with and what exactly went down here. Yeah. Yeah. Log is at another castle. There's castles? Never it's mind. A, it's, a reference. It's, a, it's a reference to a video, oh it's, it's a video game Super Mario. We, we talked. He dives back into the water. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Uh, the only video games I play are Call of Duty. What? I don't. Uh, all right. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. I love that. I love that so much. I guess we keep heading to the island, though, to see if we can find any clues there. Sure. So, as you come up upon Wizard Island, um, the. 
um, you step upon the shore of it, and it is very much just made of volcanic soil and and cinder. Um, boop, 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 boop. Sorry, there we go. Um, and so while you don't see any uh boats or anything on on the side of the island you uh come on you could definitely see um there's well-worn paths there's definitely tours that go here pretty regularly so it's it's got the typical makings of a very natural tourist attraction um you know the odd bit of litter off of the trail unfortunately um nothing super out of the ordinary but as you explore further and further up the the peak of this island you come across um what seem to be these strange formations of volcanic rock that definitely shouldn't be there um there are three rock formations at the top uh, at the peak of the island. Um, and upon a closer look, um, they seem to be crudely carved with certain eldritch symbols uh, and painted with what appear to be, actually, Terry would absolutely smell this, uh, appear to be human blood. Um where other symbols are traced. Oh. Um, so, mm -hmm. um, so this is a curse. My because I'm a monster, I have a curse, um, and my curse is pure drive. And one emotion rules me, and I chose to have a blood, like thirst, hunger of like you yeah. know this blood in the water kind of feeling. So, yeah. yeah. Um, I if I if I fail if I start to if it becomes overwhelming, I have to immediately act under pressure. Mm, okay. Oh. Interesting. Interesting. So yeah, this this has definitely been it's not fresh. Um it's been here for probably a few days at this point it's definitely recent enough that it's still got a bit of that like uh color to it but it's definitely dried um and um i think honestly i don't know casey would definitely like um look at these ruins and stuff I don't think I recognize them, but grandma might. She was mm. a lot better with these kind of stuff. Ooh. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You should, maybe she can help out. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll ask her. Um, oh, I'll wait, just... hold on. You're like, Terry, I, I, uh, like, you know, fixes himself and like sits down <laughs> in yeah, front should. of Casey. Like, take your shirt back, back, baby. Oh, right. He puts his shirt back on. <laughs> Because he knew he'll know, like his grandma will say something about it, and just sits down wait waiting. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna use past lives. Um, okay. I open up my mind uh, to part previous incarnations, or in my case, pre previous users of this power I have, um, to ask a question uh, or two, okay. depending on what I roll. Um, oh, thank God I have a plus. <laughs> Plus two. I was gonna say, are we gonna get grandma and camera like the whole rest of the game now? Oh, or... yeah. so, oh dear. I, without my modifier, I rolled a five. But with my modifier, I rolled a seven. So I still get Ooh. I get to ask one question. I don't okay. get currently uh, or for why or possessed. Um hey, so, yeah. I mean, you know, if if grandma wants to come on over and she <laughs> wants to hang out with us for the rest yeah. of the rest of the mystery, I mean that's fine. I mean, we love her, so you know, it's cool. Um I do think it's uh, manifest as uh, her taking over temporarily. So like maybe like a, a minute or two. Um, but I guess ask one question. Um, mm. Oh, Vicky 100% uh, sits down with Terry and is like, hey, Grandma Kimba, hi. <laughs> How you doing? Hey, Grandma. Oh, Vicky, it's been so long. Terry. And he's like definitely rushing over to Terry to squeeze the, the cheek. <laughs> You've gone <laughs> big. <laughs> yeah, I've been, eating, I've been eating a lot lately, Grandma. Well, check this out. Check this out what I can do, Grandma. And he like does like a he does like a handstand push. I'm like, I can do five of these oh now. My 
<laughs> five? That's I a, knew five of them. In terms of Vicky, he's been trying to learn how to do these for a long, long time. Honestly, five is... I'm so proud of you, Terry. Okay. Um, so, Cherry. I <laughs> like pose over to Cherry. You see Cherry, like, bow from the hips. And then she bows back. Um, I hope Casey's been treating you well. I can definitely speak to her if she hasn't. Um, she's She's been cool, yeah. Blushing. Um. I only have a few minutes here, but I see, I see the blush. I don't tell Casey because she doesn't know. But I've I've been watching from the behind the scenes. She she asked you out recently, didn't she? Yeah, we're kind of dating. And you, listen, okay. If she troubles you at any point, just let me know. I'll make sure to I'll make sure to deal with her. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Grandma. Of course, of course. Anyway, I have to go. I only have, I think, probably like two more minutes. Um, Grandma, and... look what I can do. He's like, try, you see Terry in the background. Terry, like, it's okay. Oh, I'll be back soon. I just need to. Terry, Terry, Grandma's got to work. Terry. <laughs> oh, right, right. <laughs> um, and my question will be, um, I guess the closest to, like, translating is this is, um, what important hidden secret can my past life show me um, the way to, I suppose, is the closest I can figure out. That is interesting. Okay. So. I think that as Grandma shows you uh, sort of um, uses their knowledge of uh, specifically the arcane arts, um, I think that to a seasoned uh, hunter, spellcaster, somebody familiar with, with, with the arcane um, she is able to pick out the the what things are concealed behind spells. And so there is definite where where Casey's expertise tends to um, lie in fire and frost magics. Um, perhaps Grandma um, has more of a familiarity with the others like force wind lightning yeah. entropy uh but here earth tends to particularly be um be the magic that has been used here recently and i think uh she is able to pinpoint things there's more concealed here than just these obelisks. That is simply the tip of the iceberg here. Okay. So there is some sort of earth magic at play. Interesting. Okay. So I'm not particularly as versed as some other users um, are at this, but there's definitely some earth magic going on here. Um, these obelisks are a bit more than just or obelisks. I think maybe. Well, they I, look I'm... real weird. Uh, should they even be here? Like, did someone just make them? No, they they definitely shouldn't be. That honestly, the earth magic is what probably what brought them here in the first place. These don't quite match the rocks and earth around it. Also, I I'm smelling human human blood here too. Maybe that could be tied in with it. Yes. Um. I, as you know, I won. I suppose when I was alive. Um, my magic didn't quite manifest the way Casey's does. Mine was more force magic, but I did dabble in at least trying to understand Earth. So I recognize some of these, um, but not much to be more help than this is odd and definitely magical. Well, Sorry. I don't know if I'll be much help, but my, my lore is definitely old and of the Earth. That would be great. Um, I can feel Casey coming back. So just, you're going to hurry over, kiss Cherry on the forehead, kiss Vicky on the forehead, kiss Terry on the forehead. She hugs uh, so tight. <laughs> gives, her, gives her a hug. Yeah, big hug, grandma. <laughs> and then Casey kind of like, the eyes roll back back, and then forward again. Because, okay, oh, um, great-grandpa Ikemba is still very angry since the last time. So did um, grandma help? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, well, well, one, uh, grandma says hi, she's and you know, she loves you very much. Um, but uh, she was saying that definitely is some kind of a uh, 
a combination of some kind of earth magic going on around here. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, these are almost the polar opposite of anything I understand. Um, so that kind of makes sense. Um, we could try, I don't know, maybe I would like to, like, if I can, I would like to go near the obelisk and just like, I guess the best I can do is like dig near the base of it to see. Okay. As far, not obviously, I can't dig all the way down, but just see like if I can feel a ooh. definite end. Ooh, sure. ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, it will, if Casey gives Terry the idea to dig down, he'll like, don't worry, cousin, I got this. He walks oh, yeah, over please. to where the, where like they want to dig down. He jumps up and dives right into the ground like he's diving into water because he's a street shark. Uh-huh. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just, like, starts spinning so, and turning into a drill. Yeah, he just <laughs> just digging his way into the ground and just buries buries himself into the ground. And you see his dorsal fins stick up out of the ground like he's like a shark spinning out of the water and dies deeper down, digging deeper. And Terry, t- oh, there goes another shark. Oh, right. I love oh, that. Um, I think <laughs> just <laughs> just for funsies, <laughs> roll to kick some ass. Yeah. I want you to roll tough against the ground. Um, but because I have unholy strength, I get to Ooh. roll weird. Roll yeah. weird against the ground, please. Yeah. I want you to Ooh. fight the ground. Uh, my weird is three, and I roll sure. a nine on the dice. So oh, that's hell a 12. Yeah. Hell yeah. Okay. So the reason I wanted to do this is so that you could get plus one forward. Uh, or you can give plus one forward to another hunter. The ground wasn't going to hurt you back. I wasn't going to do that to you. <laughs> I am going to give a plus one forward to Casey. Okay. Now, Terry, I would like you to also roll to act under pressure because you are coming right up to that blood and it's still fresh enough for oh. your sharky snout. Oh, that's plus cool, by the way. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, um, that's a seven. Okay. Okay. Um, so I think your drive uh is not you're not so overcome by your drive that I think you lose sight of your objective, but there is something else here that's interesting to you, and your nose definitely picks up on it. The source of this blood is not far. Um, you know, you are not alone on this island. Huh. Okay. Um, and we're definitely not alone on this island at all. Like, I can tell that besides us. Okay. I would like to swim back up to the surf. Swim. <laughs> I'd like to swim back up to the surface. I did this in my shirt. Sure, just all <laughs> torn to shit. Oh. And he climbs up and he's like, well, uh, this is going to sound real weird. One, we are not alone uh, here. Oh. Um, Vicky and, draws her nine millimeter. <laughs> and you see that he's visibly like sweating like his pupils are kind of dilated because he's smelling blood he's like there's a whole mess of whole mess of blood down blood uh you know uh maybe human flesh down i can help i can help you with that yeah uh I'm, i'm smelling it it's kind of uh it's much right okay i i open my fanny pack i take out two dandelions and i shove them into your nose (laughs) if you're okay with it he's totally fine with it (laughs) this has probably happened before i feel this happened before (laughs) i feel like the rest of us completely unfazed yeah usually like casey would like use the uh the frost to like Almost like send them into like I guess concrete hibernation, just like cool them down so much that they just like kind of like fall asleep. Yeah. 
Um, but that is also, also not very comfortable. So whenever a shark spa around, day, cherry. Yeah, I just like uh, I I put get the the flowers in my nose and I feel a little chill. And I kind of sit down. And I go, Phew. thanks, y'all. All right. Sounds really weird about this island. All right. Yeah. Um. Do you know what direction you said? If, if... Yeah. Where are they at? Yeah. Well, I think I can follow the trail of where they're maybe at on the island. Just take a little bit of sniffing. Whew, but it's just, you know, it's just an overwhelming feeling. Yeah, uh, I, I definitely get that. Uh, we'll have your back, and Cherry, I think Cherry brought quite a few dandelions, so we can just keep stuff, stuffing them up there. All right. Oh, well, let's go. And I will uh, try to lead them in that direction. Yeah, absolutely. So you start toward uh the there's many wooded areas on this island um and you start toward the tree line where you're you're starting to sense uh this blood and i'm just gonna roll like a pure luck check right now because i haven't rolled yet and i want to (laughs) roll um so i think as as the as the four of you or as the three of you follow terry um who is the absolute uh scooby-doo of this mystery gang right now um just because you're an animal i i mean <laughs> i feel like suaveness you're a fred but like it's fred yeah. suave fred is, a is fred okay, no. suave though that Come ascot on, was I'm cool sorry. in the 60s the right, suavest fred member of fred. that crew is velma let's be perfectly tr- honest oh, velma yeah. is my crush 100 percent crush on velma i, I think he be... had his own charm to him personally you know <laughs> I was, Shaggy, all, I was all Stoner Rob after college definitely appreciated Shaggy more. <laughs> I was all about Daphne growing up. Mm. Wait, no, no. The suavest is Scrappy. Oh my God. Oh my okay. God. That's fair. Stream but canceled. Scrappy's, Stream Scrappy's not among like the main cast. Scrappy, like, Scrappy, Scrappy doesn't exist. Scrappy doesn't Scrappy doesn't exist. We don't acknowledge Scrappy, Scrappy in this We house. don't acknowledge Scrappy. In the Scooby-Doo fandom, Scrappy's you know, it's probably the most funny. hated character I've ever met. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> because my luck roll happened to land on Stella um <laughs> but now it feels targeted so now I just <laughs> want you to know that it's not targeted uh sorry cherry it's okay I'm, Stella. I'm sorry I didn't know no? there was uh a... I, I didn't uh, it was new to me as well honestly I like Scrappy as well I know puppy so I'd like to power. apologize to the <laughs> okay. Scooby-Doo fandom you have, to, you have to make an apology video, you know. Uh, you're going to have to now. You're going to have yeah. to. Yeah. Dang it. Terry, perhaps you're lagging behind ever so slightly, uh, checking on your million followers, seeing maybe putting putting a different filter on that video of Casey, perhaps. Um, you feel yourself begin to you hear a humming it's somewhat sweet but with this eerie tone to it and the humming begins to give way to words that seem to be carried on the wind like a bit of a siren song Be still the waters drift long no more. My heart it wanders to bring it forth. And I would like you to roll to act under pressure right now. Oh my god. Just plus cool. Okay. Be chill, Cherry. Be chill. <laughs> As it mm. seems something is attempting to put you under a spell. It's fine, everyone. Cherry is the coolest person I know. It's... She uh, got this. That's going to be a nine total. Okay. That's pretty cool. Okay. So I just want to you... say above game, Stella wants yeah. to surrender because they sound hot. <laughs> <laughs> Cherry rolled a nine. So, your your training with the flower court has definitely taught you 
you you have some sort of a grounding technique that I think you've learned over time and you can feel yourself being put under a trance and you know how to break your way out of it um but perhaps you in doing so open yourself up to danger maybe you have strayed a little bit more further from the group um and i think you are starting to detect maybe the source of this siren song is perhaps not where your friends are going um yeah cherry kind of like begins to slow down and she's listening turning her head back and forth trying to figure out where it's coming from and then all of a sudden her brow furrows and she just starts yelling out into the direction of where she thinks it's coming from and says listen i've been non-stop listening to bts you cannot charm me <laughs> cherry um they cherry. Is everything is What's going right over there? There is something out there that is trying to sing like the heavenly angels of BTS, but they're not. Something is out there. In that direction. O over there. I guess. Uh, There's there a, a sni There's there a snigger from the nearby tree line. Is there Somebody... a rock on the ground? Uh, there is a rock on the ground, yes. I pick up the rock and I just throw it at the snake. <laughs> oh, what the fuck? Shh, shh, shh. Just pull my sword Two distinct out. voices. Okay, yeah. She just points her gun in that general direction. All right, MPS, I need whoever is over there in the bushes to get the fuck out here with your hands up. No response. She will murder you without hesitation. You should see her KDA score in Call of Duty. Another laugh. I'll eat you. I'll probably cook you before he does. Uh, last time you ate anything raw, he was sick for days. Um, I was sick for days. I mean, if you don't want, I I won't even chew you. I mean, I'll just like push you down my gullet. Boss, can I go stab hey. them? Uh, uh okay. <laughs> Real quick here. Uh, can I can I read a bad situation? Maybe. Ooh. Well, I mean, what are you? What are you looking to do? What are you looking to find out here? What are you? What are you? What are you uh, looking? well, what the hell's going on with people whispering and all this shit? I mean, if, if this is if this is something else, let me know. But it it seems like sure. there's something out there, and I don't like it. I can't see it, and I need to be able to see it to fucking shoot it. Um. So okay. read a bad situation seemed like the best option. Yeah, that does. Yeah, sure. So roll roll me plus sharp. Well, I have tactical genius. So mm. when I read a bad sitch, I may roll with cool instead of sharp. Okay. Which is good because cool. cool is a little bit better. The cooliest. Yeah, she's pretty cool. <laughs> All right, not bad. Uh, so that is a seven plus two is a nine. Okay, so you can hold one and spend your hold on one of these options. Oh gosh, uh, hey Stella, can you help uh, help help your friend out? Yes. Do that cool thing again. I'm just gonna paste it, and it's gonna look like crap, and you're gonna pretty <laughs> it up. I'm so good at making things pretty. Okay, I did that. You are okay, thank you. You're welcome. Yes, God, sweetie. I want everyone to know that that's how Rob and I talk to each other, literally all the time. It really is. It's <laughs> it's true. That's true. That he, right. he is me. He is me. I am. I am him. <laughs> All right. So I'm asking one of these, right? Sure. Yep. Um. Are there any dangers we have not noticed? Ooh. Okay. Any dangers you haven't noticed? Um. Yes. You absolutely. <laughs> so Cherry was just yelling at something. Yeah. Um. 
and then there were sounds from the tree line it it seems as though this is leaning a bit more away from teenage pranksters and more toward you may be tactically surrounded mm -hmm. um i think there might be more than we're thinking hey um so what's the plan around it we go one of two ways we could either you know you know give up or he looks over at Vicky. You know, it'll be like that time when we came back from, you know, Ozfest and we went to the Applebee's parking lot. You know, we just, you know, throw down and kick ass. Baby, you really want to bring that much carnage down on a mission? Look, if we're surrounded, and I'm, I'm just saying, you know, it's your, your condition, your, you know, your decision, boss. All right. Ch -ch -ch. Try to wound, at least. Not kill. All right. Sounds good. I'm probably going to pull something. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we... Okay, uh, Casey just rushes towards the voice that we know of first. Oh, just okay. Just in hand. Yeah, um, weapon raised. Cherry yeah. will run right after Casey to support them. Okay, interesting. So as the two of you rush forward, um, I think uh, a you see two figures uh, separate and go in different directions um, through the trees, both hooded, uh, both holding... Um, what seem to be daggers, small blades uh, of some sort in their hands, and um, and they they separate. Fuck, zombie wizards. <laughs> zombie wizards. I take the left. Mm -hmm. You take the right. Yeah. Okay. I guess we split. <laughs> yeah. Don't die. Okay. Hey, yeah. I won't. <laughs> As, as they split off, I'm sticking with uh, Vicky, like keeping a lookout to see if like anyone just tries to circle back over to us. Sure. Okay. Uh, I'm yeah. Tree line. Yeah. So so Vicky and Terry uh, back to back defending their their post. Um, Cherry, as you as you run through the woods, um, you I think you start gaining on your uh the 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 person you're pursuing um you have years of training years of larp experience uh all of that um and i definitely think that you are more built for this than perhaps the person you're pursuing is as you close the distance um i think a, in a panic the person turns around and sort of takes a wild swing at you um and could you uh what what do you do as this as this person just takes sort of a blind swing behind them um i'm gonna try to deflect it one okay um i basically want to just kind of take them out in the sense of like bring them to a state of imbalance i want to uh -huh. get them flat-footed and on their back and just kind okay. of like disarm them rather than like decapitate them. Right, right. Okay. So it's um it, it's less so kicking ass and more so acting under pressure than it sounds like. So let's go ahead and and roll plus cool. Okay. Hi -ya! Oh shit. Okay. Uh that's a 6. Okay. So oh. that, that is absolutely going to be a miss. Um, so I think as you strike out with your sword, they sort of in a panic, so, uh, you know, definitely dodge. You maybe slash a bit of their robe. Um, and this person turns around 
and sort of presents themselves in this cocky fashion, like, ha, 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 oh, you thought you had the jump on me. And this person is up in their own sauce, like absolutely thinks they're hot shit. Um, complete loudmouth. Um, and he says, well, on guard then, see if you can defeat the might of Tempest. <laughs> And he's going to take another wild slash at you. What do you do? Um, I decapitate this. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I, fucking head I, cut his head off. I cut his fucking head off. He's dead. <laughs> um, instead of my sword, I'll take out my fighting sticks. I'm just going to give this guy a black eye. Sure. <laughs> Let's uh, go ahead and roll, uh, roll plus tough to uh, kick some ass, because it sounds like you're trying to kick this kid's ass. Yeah, uh, does luck do anything special? Does luck do anything special? The luck will uh, give you an automatic success, I believe. I believe it's an automatic plus 12. Mm -hmm. Or 12 plus, rather. Okay. Well, I think, yeah. We only have three for this game, you said? I believe that's correct. Yeah, yes. I'll I wrote just it burn down a luck point, if that's okay. Okay, that is perfectly okay. Yeah, just do, do me a favor and mark that off on your sheet. So yeah, you... Uh, completely see that this kid is, is is more or less LARPing, honestly. You know a LARP when you see it. Um, and you just, no nonsense, just bonk right in the face with a fighting stick. Yeah. Knock I, him on his ass. I, like, take my sword and I, like, shove it into the snow. And yeah. I'm like, oh, your outfit is so chuggy. And she'll just, like, <laughs> bring out the sticks. <laughs> and you will deck yes. this fool. So... You, you murdered to... him with your words. <laughs> He's <laughs> already dead. Gosh. Stop, stop. He's already, He's already dead. dead. <laughs> um on a uh, on a on a 10 plus you do get to take an extra effect which hang on. I'm going to try my best to pretty this up so that you don't have to. Um do 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 do. do. Uh, I want one of those sounds nice. I want to force them where I want them. Okay, so I step on him. <laughs> yes, so you absolutely <laughs> knock this kid Face on his focus. ass. Uh, <laughs> 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 knock this kid no, on his like, ass. Um, and um. And he he actually drops the ritual dagger that he's holding in his hand and uh, just probably does, your fighting stick does what? One harm, two harm? Um, it it's... does <clears throat> one harm hand quick. Right. OK, so uh, one harm. Yeah. So he he will absolutely feel that black guy um, and get knocked on his ass. And you are completely in the advantage point. And he says, oh. What the hell? I <sighs> listen. The disrespect. Kid, shut the fuck up. All right. Or I'll make you into brain paste. What are you doing here? And so we're going to cut over to Casey and their pursuer uh or or the the person they're pursuing. Um Casey, similar situation. I think you're gaining on this person and they try to dodge behind a tree, but I think you follow too close and then they also uh, feeling a bit backed into a corner, maybe start taking wild jabs at you. Um, what do you do? Um, I'm just going to deflect the jabs, I think. Sure. Just if it seems that they seem panicked. Yeah. Um, okay, what would that be? Uh, plus, cool to act under pressure here, I think. Um, I, rolled, I rolled a seven. Okay, that's fine. So I think that at... Um, at a certain point, maybe they uh, potentially you've deflected a couple, but they're they're just like a, a like a wild animal cornered, and they're sort of stabbing wildly. Maybe they catch you on on the side of your arm at one point. Um, just to, to, it's it's not it's nothing it's nothing too crazy. Just uh, do you have any armor at all? Um, no, I do not. Okay. So just mark mark one harm, yeah, for me. Oh, hey, hey! Do you even know what you're doing with that thing? You're, there's no formal technique in any of your swings. Good God! 
Oh, what, you're going to lecture me? Yes, if you're really doing this, at least do it properly. <laughs> Just pull an Uncle down, Iroh please. right now. I love it. <laughs> pay, oh, your stance down, is please. all wrong. Yeah. I just oh. want to talk. Okay, just figure out what's going on here. Trust me, you don't want to. If you slash me again, you probably won't be happy with what happens next. Oh, oh, really? They're going to absolutely yeah. uh, oh, go for it. Oh, okay. Don't say I didn't warn you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to use my luck immediately. Okay. And I think what happens is um, as they like lunge with the, the knife, yeah. um, uh, Casey's eyes roll in the back of the head and roll forward again. And the thing I forgot to mention last time was that last time when uh, um, Grandma Ikema took over, both yeah. um, Casey's eyes became like blue irises. Um, mm -hmm. As they roll back and roll forward again, they both are brown. And he's like, then you just see his great grandpa Ikemba. And I was like, oh, no. oh you, so you want to fight then? Okay, then just fight. <laughs> and he's gonna just swings the, it's sort of like dodging. He doesn't even dodge, he just swings the sword down right at the hand that is um, holding the dagger and just immediately goes for that. Um, oh, man. <laughs> grandpa okay, does well, not play at all. Uh, yeah, no, <laughs> grandpa, grandpa around. ain't fucking around. Holy shit. So yeah, on on a on a ten plus, you get to pick an extra effect out of that. Um, it's in the roll twenty chat. So is there anything okay. on there that you would like on a kick some ass? Um, I would like to. So I take okay. So uh, on a ten plus, wait, what happens on a ten plus? That's different. I pick an extra. One? Um, you pick an extra effect. You you succeed. Okay. So okay. you do inflict the harm that you're trying to inflict, but you get an extra yeah. effect in addition. Um, because it's Ikemba that's taken over, I think he wants even more harm. So plus another one. Oh, man. So um, you you have the enchantment, which gave you, what, plus one already. So that's yeah. going to be an additional two. And what's the base stat of that? Um... Two. So it's a four harm. Ooh. Whoa, yeah. uh, man. It's, messy. it's a messy murder. Weapon, so. <laughs> it's a murder. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So, yeah, you immediately, you disarm this person, not literally, um, <laughs> but you're pretty fucking close, and absolutely fuck them up. Like, slash them down the arm, uh, close to the wrist, but careful not to completely decapitate them. <laughs> Uh, or decapitate, dearmitate, who knows, whatever, <laughs> slice it <laughs> off, dismember, them. dismember is the word we were looking for, That's chat, it. um, and they drop the dagger, and just completely, uh, whether it be the force or the shock or both, are just backed against the tree, sort of, like, cowering on the ground, like, what the fuck, man, oh my god, uh, so, you, what, pick it up, let's keep fighting, you seem very adamant to fight, let's go. You have another I'm hand. I, what, you're right-handed? Pick up with the left one. <laughs> Zen man, I, I don't want... I don't want more trouble. I, you clearly want... And then at mid-sentence, the eyes roll back again. Goes, whoa, okay. Oh. I am so sorry. I am so... <laughs> Put the sword down. I am so sorry. Um, I did warn you. Whenever I... He can be kind of like... He jumps out whenever I'm in danger. Um... Uh, it takes off the like top and then just like wraps the armor up and goes, I'm very sorry. Um, we probably should get you out of here. Uh, what were you doing here anyway? Um... And so we're going to take that moment to cut back to Terry and Vicky. Um, Terry and Vicky, you see that your comrades have ran off into the woods and um, you're hearing commotion, fighting, a little bit of shit talking. Um, and I think, uh, as, as maybe Vicky, you're trying to follow what's happening in the lens of your gun, um, suddenly, uh, a wall of stone erupts maybe in front of where you're aiming. Um, could you please, uh, act under pressure for me? Roll me plus cool. Ooh, not as great. Uh, okay, well, that's four plus one is five, plus two is seven. 
Okay, okay. Seven is not too bad. I think as this wall erupts in front of you, uh, while you are able to dodge out of the way, it knocks maybe the rifle out of your hands briefly. Um, and as you go to pick it up, you see the stones around where the rifle lands. Um, the rifle seems like it's starting to be adhered to the stone and a hand reaches up behind it and grabs your leg. I told you this was fucking zombies and just starts punching it. <laughs> your fist connects with solid rock. Oh. Fuck. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I look over to see what she's punching. Mm -hmm. And a stone I, hand has grabbed your wife's leg. Oh, hell no. And mm. I grab I grab down at the wrist of this stone of this stone hand. And I just try to like wrench it from like wrench it from uh, the ground and just pull whatever is this stand stone hand is attached to out of the ground. Ooh, okay. Um, I think I'm going to. I'm going to call this protecting someone. Could you roll plus tough, please? Plus tough. Oh. Yeah. That is a ten. Oh, easy. Okay, so you accomplish what you seek to accomplish. All harm is prevented to Vicky. Um, you also get to pick an extra effect here. I'm realizing I probably should have had these ready as handouts. Forgive me. I learned nothing okay. from Savvy Running Monster of the Week. There you go. Okay. Oh, that uh, seems like it was more. Um, How did this happen? I'm sorry. It's every frame, everything from you suffer little harm to you hold the enemy back is what you're looking at. That's um, my bad here. I would like to. I like to inflict harm on the enemy. Okay. Yeah. So I think you immediately wrench um, this creature out of the ground, and what comes at the other end of this arm is a stone lady um and she just looks uh at, like peaceful but also menacing and and just like mysterious um you what are you what are you doing to inflict harm are you uh what do you do that you have this lady um um as i pull it, I pull the stone lady up out the ground. I just, in one smooth motion, just bam, slam her right onto the ground hard. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So you see as she lands on the ground, um, there's a split second where she seems stunned. And then she just sucks back into the ground. He like watches that. And he's like, mm -hmm. you know what? You know, in hindsight, I realized that was a really bad idea for me to do. <laughs> and so you hear um another uh another loud sound um from maybe the tree line elsewhere and uh a ball of stone fires right at you um ro roll to act under pressure okay <laughs> Oh, oh, that is a cool, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a four. Can, 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 oh no, I can't help that. Sorry. You have luck. Um, wait. So you use it, you know. Uh, do you have luck? I'm a. I'm a use the luck. Yeah. Oh hell yeah! You do <laughs> what you're set out to do. I have three luck, right? Yep. Okay. Might as well use it. Yeah. So I think. Okay. You react quick enough that I, I'd like to. You've got like beefy arms right yeah like it's the like beefiest yeah yeah it's it's like uh the the like whatever this protector just bounces off his skin and uh he looks in that direction takes a long sniff of the air mm -hmm. and he looks over at vicky and he says 
75 yards that direction. Mm -hmm. And then he then looks around for that giant lady again. Yeah. So um, I think as Vicky levels her rifle at the tree line, um, you see over her shoulder uh, this figure coming up from the ground again slowly head down like and then reaches out her hand and points at you and then it turns to a beckoning finger and you hear that can same, i shoot it <laughs> you want to shoot the lady behind you or do you want to shoot the tree line oh oh i'm sorry i thought this lady had come up in front of us no 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 i'm, oh, I'm shooting no. wherever wherever terry told her to shoot okay Sorry. Okay, go so ahead. you're gonna no 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 you're fine. So why don't why don't you roll to to kick some ass on uh on a tree? Or you know, people hidden in the trees, who's to say? Uh that's a 12. Oh so, so wow. I, uh, I rolled a six and a four, and I got a plus two on tough. Wow. Sure. So mm. um you either get to uh take plus one forward or give it to another hunter, uh, inflict terrible harm, uh, suffer less harm, or force them where you want them. Hmm. I'm gonna give plus four to Terry. Okay, okay. So you, so Terry, you now have a plus one forward. Um, Terry, you see this monster. What, what are you doing? Um, I look at this monster and I like crack my neck a bit and I just run right at it mm -hmm. and I dive up and I dive right into the ground mm -hmm. and you see that dorsal fin just like shoot rise up out of the out of the earth and like circle around this figure dive back in and suddenly you just see not Terry get up like shoot up out the out the earth but this gigantic 10 foot long megalodon shark just shoot up out the ground and go to chomp down on this figure. Holy shit. Roll to kick some ass. That's plus tough. And keep in mind that you have that plus one forward. And I also have a plus one forward. I oh, know that's uh, only when I'm being investigative as my shape shift. Okay. But also, yeah. So I roll tough. So I roll weird because it's unholy strength. Yeah. And also, sorry, Vicky, what, what did your rifle do in terms of harm? Four. Okay. Oh my far god. and oh my god. Four far and loud, I believe. I mean, I oh yeah. Know. Okay. Oh no, just 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 far. Okay. Just That's an far. eleven. Eleven. Yeah, okay. That's gonna work. Um, are you trying to uh force them where you want them, suffer less harm, inflict terrible harm? I'm going to inflict advantage? terrible harm. Yeah, that's what I thought you would do. Okay. Um, so, so that's uh, I had plus one harm, right? Yep. And so, the plus one forward that you got from Vicky. So that's so that's two, two plus three is my my base's teeth is three harms. So that's five okay. because I also used claws of the beast. That's another one. So that's six harm in total. Oh my god. Uh, does any of that ignore armor by chance? Yes, it does. All of it? Yes, ignore armor to a, to a base. My God. I'm a so shulk. Terry wow. immediately chomp, chomp. takes a massive, like, claw bite everything at once. Uh, you see this, it, it, it collides with this lady, this furious megalodon, and cracks immediately form all over her body as she is completely staggered pieces of her begin to to fall off and she lets out this wail as she adheres herself back into the stone seemingly fleeing this site and in front of you cherry uh this this absolute fucking edge lord that you have cornered um hearing the wail says no no, it can't end like this. Craig, you have to you have to finish the ritual now. And and in front of you, Casey, uh, for a moment you're distracted by this teenager yelling in in the other part of the woods. Um the person that you have bandaged up 
kindly after you know maybe fucking them up a little bit uh quickly pulls a gun on you and tries to shoot you in the side um <laughs> yeah so yeah. right now uh, not, casey's currently nice. just in a sports bra and sweatpants right now oh no <laughs> no but it's a good oh, no. to talk to use as a makeshift bandage um yeah i would i think i can dodge i think yeah, uh, probably, probably. Okay. You can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I guess that's an act under pressure role. Yeah, that makes sense. I am yeah. not the coolest. I don't know if you've noticed, but Casey isn't very cool. Um, to say I have a minus one in that. So let's see how that works. That's okay. Um, don't forget, you also have a plus oh, one from me. Never mm, mind. I would like to use my luck again. <laughs> oh no! Like, that's okay. okay. I don't yeah, know, that's a minus one. That's perfectly would have been fine. A six. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, I think Ikamba takes over again. Yep. Um, yeah. And I think like they they kind of like turn it around to like check on whoever's screaming like on that side of the wood, and suddenly mm -hmm. he turns around, faces the guy um with and has both brown eyes again. Just grabs mm -hmm. the gun and yeah. twists it in his hand and goes. Should have pulled the trigger faster. Now run. Um, and I'm going to try and like disarm them and then see if they do run after that. Okay. Wait, literally yeah. disarm? <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I think we have to ask if Grandpa comes Yeah, out. yeah. With Grandpa, yeah. Yeah. With, with Great Grandpa, Kemba. I feel like we've definitely had situations where Great Cam Grandpa, Kemba just goes wild. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I would normally say this is a manipulate somebody, but you have invoke the fear of grandpa in this person <laughs> um i i'm gonna say that they absolutely do what you asked and they just sort of like like spit on the ground near you and and just sort of like crawl off tail between their legs and like try to run off to find um the person that uh cherry was uh pursuing and i think terry and vicky um where you shot into the woods, uh, you see another uh, earthen wall come up. And Terry, you can smell that somebody is running behind that wall toward the peak of the mountain. They are trying their best to cover themselves, but they are not acting as cool as uh, one of you. I... Oh, you're still in Meg form. Oh, no. I dive like as a giant as a megalodon, I dive back into the ground and I sure. swim after. So you just see that a gigantic dorsal fin cutting through the earth, going after this figure uh, that's running off. Vicky runs and tries to like parkour off this wall and chase after Terry. Is this the, oh, is this the person that I like? Um, Ikemba told to run, right? No, this is oh, a no, third is a person mess. that that Ooh, okay. um, Vicky had had. Vicky and Terry had trained their sights on, and Vicky was trying to take out. There, there are three minions that you know of right now. Okay. Yeah. Casey definitely like doing this. Like Casey, I feel like I think Ikemba wants to just go fight someone else. Yeah. So I think um, Cherry knows that Ikemba isn't a fan of Cherry, so yeah. actively is like, I'm not gonna help Cherry. But there's enough of Casey in there to be moving their legs <laughs> forcefully. So you just see the camera like, I don't know. I can clearly hear Terry. He, no, I, oh, fine. And so just trudging along to try to catch up with Cherry. This feels like the best version of like the Firestorm Matrix. Like, <laughs> I love this so much. Oh, God, that's great. Yeah, so... um Terry closing in on this on this third person. I think they are going to take one last desperate uh, attempt at you. Um, roll. Uh, oh gosh, are you are you just guns a blazing trying to kick their ass? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So roll to kick some ass. I'm going to use my luck. Oh oh man, ass thoroughly kicked. Um, do I need to ask what you're doing or is it just inflicting terrible harm? It's just inflicting terrible harm. <laughs> oh no. He swallows oh. them. He yeah. avoids them. Yes. No, you, I, you do enough damage that it's going to happen. You yeah. just see that not that the nose of the megalodon knock them up into the air 
And that shark jumps out the water and just clomps down all body hole and dives back into the earth. And there's like a silence as Terry in his normal form crawls out. Oh my God. (laughs) Bye bye. Yeah. No, this Maybe we I, had all them shrimp back at the cabin. I still, already, got, you, I, I still got room. Don't worry. I'll burn it off pretty much later. Don't ruin your appetite for dinner. I won't. I won't. Mm. So interestingly enough, I think as this person is thoroughly freaking decimated, um, I think there is one last whale. Um from the lady of the woods um and elsewhere i think you see perhaps just the camera sees this um on the what's a rock formation referred to as the phantom ship um which apparently i do not have a picture of i thought i did i swear i did oh i do here it is show the players um there are crags of of rock from this peak that slowly sort of like crumble away and the log the the log himself the old man sort of bobs out of them and floats back into the sea or into the into the lake and above as as terry sort of like wipes their their mouth off uh you can see that the clouds, although the night is starting to fall, um, the clouds are. Oh, it didn't work. The show to player button didn't work. Let me try again. Did it work again? No, no, no. Okay, mm-hmm. here we're gonna edit it. It's really just a bunch of rocks. Like it's not. It's nothing. I, it's nothing I crazy. See the rock. Yeah, here you go. Yeah, have some rocks. Can you see them? Yeah. Uh, oh, see the rocks? oh there's yeah. a bunch of rocks. That's really pretty. Yeah, yeah, it's like the peak of a a mountain, basically. Um, have some walks. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. yeah. So, so stone crumbled away from them. The the old man starts to bob out, and and you can see the sky is beginning to clear, and the ice begins to recede from the lake. The lake is no longer freezing over. The weather is no longer at odds. Um, and two of these the the two remaining uh minions uh sort of come out of the the woods to see this and are thoroughly just defeated um looking forlornly at their ritual site hearing the lady of the woods wailing um and they just sort of like crumple to the ground and uh just They've got nothing smart to say anymore. Terry walks over to these two kids. He like crouches down in front of them, you know, like a cool youth pastor. (laughs) Now, let me tell you something, kids. It may seem cool to try to summon a a gigantic earth lady, you know, for fun and profit. But let me tell you something. It ain't cool. You want to do that kind of stuff, all right? She go out there and have some uh, real good hobbies. I don't know, maybe do some dirt biking or something. Just don't summon giant rock ladies, all right? It ain't cool. I hate your friend, man. I hate your friend. He <laughs> gets up and walks away. You can see that they're silently crying at the loss of their friend who they had called Craig. Um, and <laughs> somewhere else in the woods, um, you see a piece of volcanic rock nearby the ranger station that now once again houses the lady of the woods who should now also be in your journals. Yeah. Um, once was thought to be simply a statue carved by a doctor in the 19, the 1910s uh, actually seemed to be some sort of supernatural creature that this ritual may have shaken loose to what end though trying to freeze the lake we'll never know 
Casey comes out, still possessed by Ikemba, and just goes, mm-hmm. Tell you what the hell are you wearing? <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm sorry. Uh, thank you, Grandpa. Hey, Grandpa Kemba, how are you? I mean, I've been better. Why is why is Casey constantly just every time I come into Casey's body, she's basically wearing nothing. Does anyone have a shirt I can wear? No, no, Grandpa. <sighs> grabs out of her bag. Uh, here you go, Grandpa. Sorry. Uh, thank you. Uh, I gotta arrest these kids. Um, yeah, one of them's probably gonna if you don't suture that wound properly. They're probably just feeling in their right arm for a while. Uh, yeah. okay. Oh no, Terry, <laughs> act under pressure. <gasps> <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> Terry. <laughs> we have food at home. I rolled. Dindling. I rolled. Dindling. I rolled. A, I rolled a seven. So Terry just staring at the the one with like the the missing arm, just like mm. it's not missing. It's like a massive gash down it. With yeah, it's not doing well, hair. but it's not missing missing yet. But it's enough to yeah. I, you're I, mm. Terry. Popcorn shrimp. Yeah. Right, right, right. Popcorn. Popcorn shrimp. Delicious popcorn shrimp. Cheddar Bay biscuits. Mm-hmm. By the way, hit hit take this and like tosses the gun that the kid had and throws it over to Vicky. Don't know why you kids use guns. In yeah, less than like two seconds, she has like, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it is, it is a shitty old revolver. Like you, oh. yeah, they definitely stole it from like their dad's collection or something. Oh no. Yeah. This is a perfect example of poor gun maintenance. Now this shit's dangerous. You mm. shouldn't even have this. <laughs> All right, on your feet. And this is a perfect example of shitty LARPers. Mm-hmm. I, I, I think that somehow struck a more more than this defeat of an actual supernatural being i think the the de facto leader of these cultists if you can call them that kind of takes offense to that he says whatever man you'll never understand we had it all figured out we were gonna show everybody hey listen kids i will take your arm off if you keep talking yeah, whatever. I, I will let Grandpa kick your ass. Fun. I'll eat you, <laughs> baby. Pop huh? I mean, right, right. Popcorn shrimp. shrimp. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. You can but like turns to face Charon's glares at them. She just flips off Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> You're an asshole, Grandpa. Yeah, yeah. It takes it takes one to know one. And I can feel Casey coming back. Get another shirt, Terry. Walking around wearing rags. <laughs> and then his eyes roll back in the back of their head and it rolls back again. See, that's what happens when you dive into the ground when you're still wearing your shirt. You mess it up and then Grandpa's going to come and he's going to yell at you. I remember to keep my shirt, take my shirt off before I dive in the ground. Thank you. Oh, It's all right, baby. That's why I keep extra shirts. Here you go. I'm guessing that was Ikemba. Um, and just immediately turns to Cherry. I'm sorry. Okay. I don't take it personally. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm good. Are you okay? Um, I've got a little bit of a gash. I think they mixed me, but I think other than that, I'm good. Cherry zip opens up her fanny pack and just like gives you a dandelion. Thank you. Yeah, she walks away. <laughs> uh, she puts it in her hair. Terry like leans into the frame next to Casey, going, "Ah!" It just like what? Her. So that's what. See, this is it. Baby steps. Baby steps. Baby steps. Okay. <laughs> that's amazing, and I think that is a good time to wrap this up as uh y'all have solved the mystery you have stopped the lady of the woods from trying to bring about something uh that would seek to break some sort of a spell that seems to be on this lake protecting from who knows what but it involves the old man 
and it involves not letting the lake freeze over. Uh, and uh, and you did good. This mystery lives to the lake so? lives to to. <laughs> to see another day i don't know it's late <laughs> it's late this on the mystery remains <laughs> this list so looks like day. this mystery just got lived <laughs> yeah what about take out the sunglasses you just see the yeah <laughs> Yay! Uh, i just want to say real quick thank you so much rob for another awesome yeah. episode of Yay! stuff thank you thank you um how do you feel <laughs> yeah Oh gosh, I uh, I so I've never I've never run Monster of the Week before. Uh, it's a system that is always I've enjoyed. I've played for years. I was there were two very big inspirations for me wanting to do this and tell this story. One of which uh, was just the amazing uh, leadership and GMitude and talent of Savvy over at twitch.tv slash game nights that's game with two g's like gg and knights with a k like the dude with the sword twitch.tv slash game nights um they're very talented they ran slang 101 which then became slang 201 uh and it's on a, a an indefinite hiatus at this point i think yeah, slash i think so but there's plenty we'll of other games on the yeah. channel over there yeah. they're a wonderful gm uh, I would not have been as inspired to run it if it were not for them. And the second inspiration for the concept of the National Park Rangers being a government agency who deals with fighting monsters is literally Wally's guest character on Slaying 101. Uh, buddy, buddy, a buddy, buddy. to all. Oh, buddy. Um, I buddy. literally rewatched that episode uh when i was writing this mystery um 100 thank you for bringing an amazing character to the table that in turn led to being able to take this opportunity and thank you stella for letting me have this opportunity on this channel awesome thank you yeah. thank you uh, we're gonna go around real quick uh, please tell us who you are where you can find us anything that you want to plug and uh, we'll start off with sid Hey again, I'm Christina Sid. You can find me on the Twitters at Greek Sid. Uh, yeah, I'm playing a lot of games right now. Uh, as mentioned, uh, Twitch.tv slash Game Nights is kind of my home channel at the moment. Two G's and a K. Uh, I am over there. Mondays playing some D and D at eight o'clock Eastern. I run a game of Urban Shadows over there on Thursdays. Wally's well, in that one. Hey, um, uh, Friday's coming up soon. We've hacked Good Society and we've turned it into something called Neon Gods based on the Wicked and the Divine. That's gonna be starting in May. Very excited. We're gonna Wait, be gods. What? Uh, no. Yeah, we hacked Good Society. We are heavily inspired by the Wicked and Divine uh, graphic novel series. We're gonna be gods okay gods being super petty and spreading rumors about each other and trying to like basically take over the world it's gonna be amazing um oh. that's on friday starting in may i'm there every other saturday playing some fate some very good good anime af uh judges bizarre adventure persona stands uh it's yeah it's anime as fuck it's great and Sundays playing Blades in the Dark uh, that just started up. It's a lot of fun. Uh, when I'm not there, you can find me on Wednesdays over on twitch.tv slash Critical Misses. We have our finale of our Good Society game, Queer Society, uh, coming up this Wednesday. And we did just get renewed for a second season. Very excited. So we're going to play even more Queer Good Society. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Like I said, I'm in a lot of stuff. Uh, check my Twitter. I post every time we go live with something. So that's me. Thank you so much for having me. It was so much fun. And yeah, Wally and I uh, have a lot of fun with these characters. This is like the third time I think we've played some iteration of yeah, the really. Wallers. <laughs> this is our third iteration of them. I, yeah. We love them so much. They're just, they're just, they're good, good OCs and we adore them. So thank you for letting us play them. Yay. Thank you for being here. Next we have Wally up y'all it's me wally you can find me over on twitter at w-a-l-l-e 132 you like the cute little disney robot just pretty much talking about what's 
I'm doing. Um, like Sid said, you can find me every Thursdays over at G, uh, over at Game Nights, nice, two Gs with the K, playing that good, good uh, 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 Urban Shadows hack we are enjoying so much. I'm playing Sandalfon, the imp, and it's fun playing basically a cat. I think that's the, the best way to describe <laughs> him. He's basically a cat, you know? Um, yeah, I, I actually got to play a whole session as a cat like last time, so... It was a, it was interesting and it was a lot of fun. It's kind of like weirdly therapeutic just to be playing a cat, you know, I don't know. Um, also, that's pretty much all I'm in right now. But what I'm also going to do is I'm going to shout out Carrying Comfort Studios because they are now in their finale of their Big Kingdom Hearts actual play that they're doing. Um, these next couple of weeks is their big, big finale for this series that they have been doing. I was in uh, the episode uh, before this week playing David Xanatos as a villain, and it was so much fun. And I may be back for the finale. So Ooh. highly check out Carrying Comfort Studios. It's every Friday night. Uh, it's the next three weeks, or is it next four weeks? I don't know, but it's their big finale. Come check them out. I may be guest starring. Who knows? You'll have to just tune in and find out and check that out. Um, the other stuff I'm doing, just follow me on Twitter and you can find out what I'm doing because I'm in a lot of stuff in the background. Yeah. Excellent. Is that twitch.tv slash Karen Comfort Studios? Yes. Okay. Links are in the chat. Next, we have uh, Drac. Hi, I am Draconix, or Drac for short. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Draconix. That's D R A K O N I Q U E S. I stream all over the place, and I have a very cool and stacked schedule right now. Um, usually on Fridays, I'm over on Key Times. I'm in an old villain, cam old villain Pathfinder Second Edition campaign called Parliament of Owls, where I play a sorcerer vampire who very recently committed matricide which he's been trying to do all his life so that was a lot of fun um and we're going to so you can find me at 6 p.m pacific on key every friday um on wednesdays over on rule of law um you can find me there at 6 p.m as well in a cyber system campaign called infinite horizon i play a time traveling lizard alien who is a leader of the resistance force <laughs> um, um, I very recently finished on Thursdays, finished a Dark Souls mini series, which is very fun. I played Stitches, who was um, Patch's partner in crime. Um, but a thing I'm very excited about is that starting on May 3rd at 1 p.m. Um, I think it's 1 p.m. Pacific, um, I'm going to be over on Table Story in a new campaign called Kingmakers. Um, and I'm very excited. I bought a, a set of armor for it. I'm going to be doing makeup for it. I'm very, I'm very stoked for it. Um, my character look-wise at very least i'm probably not gonna have the hair for it but look-wise it's going to be very heavily based on scar and kovu from lion king oh. so if you want to if you want some of that stay tuned i'm very excited on tuesday we'll release another teaser trailer and because of the gm i have um pumpkin berry there are like secrets hidden in the trailers that even the cast members don't know so literally like the same frame by frame kind of stuff so if you want to figure it out and join the rest of the people in a um, discord because they're there's a massive disco of people trying to decipher, decipher some of the stuff. Please do. And I will stare at all of you being geniuses and figure it out along with you. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much everything. Oh, or just keep an eye out on my Twitter. Something's going to be coming out on Tuesday as well. A project that I've been working on for a long time. Just keep an eye out. Uh, but yeah, that's me. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have bonus stage Rob. Hey, hi. That's the hey, that's me uh once again thank you for letting me be here um i am uh doing a couple different shows on ggk currently uh you can catch me as a player in the queer chronicles of the strixhaven quartet uh a D, &D actual play series uh once again on twitch.tv slash game nights at 8 p.m eastern on mondays uh, you can catch me in Saturday Night's Pathfinder, uh, which is a Pathfinder 2nd Edition game, uh, also on Game Nights, uh, every other Saturday at 5 p.m. Eastern. Uh, we're off this week. It would have been this week, but a couple of players have conflicts. Um, so we will be back, not next Saturday, but the following. Uh, additionally, there are a couple of projects that have either yet to be announced or uh, will be announced shortly. 
uh, casting wise, um, which I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you the insider. Uh, the Emerald Templars, which is made by the wonderful and talented D'Angelo Murillo, uh, is which was <clears throat> fully funded in under 24 hours on Kickstarter, I might add, uh, is having a streamed play test on Total Party Chill on the 2nd of May. Um, and I don't know, you might see a familiar face there. Um, and uh, like I said, there's another couple of projects that have yet to be announced uh, for the month of May. Uh, so keep an eye on my Twitter for those. It's at bonus stage Rob. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'll see you around. Thanks again. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Stella Luna. If you've enjoyed this content, please give us a follow. That's a free way that you can support this channel and also get notifications for when we go live. We want to give a shout out to all of our Patreons because of your support. We're able to do things like this. We believe in getting all these wonderful, talented people paid and your support lets that be possible. Uh, for us, the couple of announcements that I have coming up is on Sundays at 5 p.m. Eastern time, we run a game of Strixhaven, which is an open roster, which means literally anyone can come play. We rotate the cast for every single week. That way you can come on in and you don't have to commit to every single week and kind of just come as often as you like. Um, we have some really special stuff coming up next week on Tuesday at three, not two, at 3 p.m. Eastern time. Visions of Gold is going to premiere over at the Lady Mage channel. I'll be playing as Medea, who is the party mom and is also actually really kind of depressing. I've realized after session zero, I was like, oh, my God, I made my mom the TTRPG character. I oh, love no. her so much, but I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> so that's going to be really interesting. Um, I got all my cosplay stuff. I'm going to be putting on body paint and all of that. It's going to be really fun. Um, and we're also premiering the first episode of our new Unbound campaign of Candlekeep Mysteries on Friday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. And we will be having episode two of our uh, Urban Shadows 2 three-shot adventure that is emceed by the noir enigma that's gonna be at 9 p.m saturday um that's it for us thank you so much for being here everyone thank you thank you thank you and uh have a wonderful rest of your night and enjoy my sleeping cat bye buddy <laughs>